¿Listos? Sí, espera. Sí. Yeah, pero no. How's everyone doing? Um, for today, we're going to paint uh, from a black and white photograph. And um, yesterday, I'll, I'll tell you guys the truth. Yesterday, I wanted to paint a Mela Mutter uh, portrait because she is one of the best painters ever, I feel. And it's very sad because it's really hard to find uh, photographs of Mela Mutter. There, there's a couple, and I noticed that there's a Polish book on her that I'm thinking about buying just to see if I could learn a little bit more about her life. But um, my first choice was going to be Mela Mutter. Again, I think she's one of the most incredible painters ever. For sure, one of the most amazing portraitists ever. Uh, and But I landed on Manet. I think Manet is genius, so it's not like we did like a second-rate painter. Um, and for today, I wanted to keep my, you know, women painter vibe going. I was like, no, I, I really want to paint uh, one of these incredible women painters because I really do feel that because of their context, because of how they had to be educated, unfortunately, and I'm speaking about um, a lot of women painters that were studying at the end of the 19th century, uh, their work acquired you know, this really incredible essence that you can't find in you know, the, paint their, the paintings of, of uh, male painters of the time. They're very, very different. They're far more intimist. They're far more um, just subjective. They feel really, really um, just private in many, many ways. So for today, I'm going to paint one of the greatest uh, women painters. I feel I, I really, I'm really at odds when I say women painters. Like I would always want to say painters, but I don't want to be, you know, blind, uh, like gender blind. I don't want to be, um, I want to be aware of the fact that they had to go through very many different things, very different variables than the ones that men had to go through. And um, so, you know, yes, women painters. And uh, today we're going to paint Helen Sch uh, Scherfbeck. I, I probably butchering her name, but she's a Finnish painter and she's incredible. There's a couple of photographs that you can find of her. Denny um, is going to share the, the one that we're going to be working from. Mm -hmm. And I thought also that I wouldn't change uh, the palette that we used from yesterday's painting because um, Helen's work is just so beautifully designed. I think that when she started to become like a modernist painter, uh, because she did start out as a you know, very French, you know, Eurocentric naturalist painter, uh, but when she shifted towards uh, modernism, uh, her shapes just became j incredible, just this gorgeous sort of symphony of abstract shapes, um, and which makes her one of the most enigmatic painters ever, I feel. Uh, the development of her work throughout the years is just mind-boggling. It, it, it has to be one of the most exciting lives of any painters ever. So if you're not familiar with her work, please look her work up because she is absolutely inc incredible. Again, Helen Scherfbeck. Um, so I am going to use the palette that we used yesterday. And, um, and um, yeah, so let's get, let's get started. Um, so just to recap, yesterday's palette was titanium white, raw sienna, uh, red ochre, and ivory black. So it's kind of like a Zorn you know, palette without the accent in the red. We are using a natural uh, red ochre, so this is going to be far less tinting, far more forgiving than those, um, you know, cheaper kind of substitutes, which are totally fine, but they, you know, the, the ones that are less expensive, I feel they, they have a far greater tinting strength. Uh, the natural ones, the natural earths, are just, they feel like that. They just feel a lot more earthy, a bit more transparent, uh, a bit grittier also. Um, so very beautiful. I think these two are old Holland paints. My ivory black is my Medi Classico. And my white is a fast drying white, a um, M. Graham fast drying white. So 
you know, I'm brand agnostic. I, I don't really, we're not uh, sponsored by any brand. I just use, you know, whatever I feel like is best or suits best my painting. So let's get started. They're asking no yes. yellow or blue. No, no, no. We're, we're going we're gonna to put some primary colors for, um, for the uh, paintings that we are going to do uh, in the remaining days of the week. But for today, I wanted to go back to, um, I wanted to stick with this very, very earthy traditional palette. But don't worry, today we're going to focus on drawing design composition because I, I think this photo almost like demands that we do that. And we're going to shift some values around the portrait, which I think is going to be super, um, super nice also. So I, I start out, people sometimes ask, these are a couple of rosemary brushes that I have. They are, they were gifted to me also. Um, I haven't really bought a lot of uh, rosemary brushes. They are ivory filberts. Um, they have lost their shape, but I don't think it's the, um, the brush's fault. I, you know, that's totally on me because I really scrub with these brushes. So these brushes, I think, are uh, served a better purpose if you have, if you're using a medium, and if you're using a very nicely primed um, surface. I'm not using either one of those things, so of course the brushes are gonna be beat up. They're kind of scuffed a little bit, uh, but you know, I, I kind of like that they are irregular in their shape. So I like to start my paintings with a bigger, um, sort of more irregular brush. And maybe for the uh, portrait, I'm gonna use just a more traditional bristle brush, because these are like bristle replacements, you know, this is what, uh, Rosemary is trying to um, is trying to she's trying to find an alternative to a traditional um, hog bristle brush. So this is what she does, and honestly, I think they're very good. You know, uh, credit where credits due. I think these are very very good. Uh, but I also like my traditional kind of uh, hog bristle brushes. This is a Da Vinci Maestro two. So. Yeah, so maybe I'll start laying my, my uh, lighter colors also with this, just to have a little more body. And I like that because probably like an hour, an hour and a half into the painting, um, because I'm working on raw paper, because I'm using a fast drying white, it, you're not gonna feel it as you're painting, you know, the, the dryer in the uh, titanium white, but you're gonna be able to paint with a softer brush, and that's why I mix this, these brushes, with these, with like flat synthetic, like cheaper flat synthetics, because there is a moment in the painting where I can just put paint on top of, you know, a thicker first layer of paint. You, you can't really think about it as, you know, in, in the sense of uh, working on layers, uh, as if like the layer, the paint layer has dried uh, entirely. No, not really. But, you know, it gives you alternatives in an ala prima session, and that's really, really cool. So, let's get started. They're asking... Enough talk. Oh. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you, no. You can take it on me. <laughs> no, no, no. Que el papel que estás usando y what surface have you squeezed your paint on? Supongo que la paleta. Oh, okay. So, the... The paper and the... Yeah, the first one, this is moleskin uh, sketch... This is a moleskin sketchbook. So, it's just a regular... Um, sketchbook from Moleskin, not a regular one in the sense that it's it's whatever uh, sketchbook that you you can buy you can buy from Moleskin. Now they actually have a series that's called sketchbooks, or, <laughs> or I think you find them as art sketchbooks, something like that, and um, they are suited for multimedia work. So you could do drawings on top of this watercolor. I mean you can, but it's not great. But you, you can certainly do like pen and ink, drawing, and you know, I've kind of noticed that it is incredible if you use it for painting. So um, it's not, again, you know, people, a lot of people ask, um, ask me this, it's not great for the um, longevity of the painting, but it makes an incredible surface and that's where we have to kind of make a decision and say, wow, you know, I'm sacrificing these things for the sake of, of the expressive alternatives, the expressive qualities that I can um, gain through my painting. So that's a choice that I made. It's a very conscious choice. I, I've worked for years um, prepping my surfaces uh, properly. 
So I know what uh, a very nice piece of linen feels like that's properly primed. Um, I know those things. I've painted plenty of paintings, dozens upon dozens upon dozens of paintings on surfaces that are very expensive, that are very well primed. But I landed on this and I love it. So uh, I think it suits my personality and it suits my painting manner. And um, it's very hard for me to give it up if I have to be completely honest because uh, I, I've really grown to, to love it. So, yeah. Um, he mentioned an artist book at the, that he considered, bleh, that he considered buying. <laughs> Do you know who it is? Al principio dijiste de un libro. A book? Sí, creo. Porque... I don't know. Did I mention a book? Maybe, maybe you guys can help me. Um, Which one? I don't know if I've mentioned the book. Maybe I did, and I'm just like blanking out. I'm gonna push her towards that side. I think it's super cool that there's tension on this side, but I want her shoulder to fit. Ni so, and I want these shapes to fit also. So. Nicolas, have you ever tried weed or any psychedelics before doing a painting? No, no. Be about what could be the result. No, 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 no. I, I used, when I was studying, yeah, I used to, but, but it just as a social thing, but never, never for work. I never thought, and not even drinking for, for, for painting. Um, I, I always, you know, and that I, I, I've recognized it's something that has um, been part of my life, you know, and it's a constant. I, I always want to be very, very present when I work. I'm not saying that that's, you know, if you take any you know LSD if you're tripping while you're working if that works for you that's totally fine that's you know that's your you know that's your decision um, but it just doesn't work for me I have to be so or I don't have to be but I just like being so conscious about every single decision that I'm making that I don't like I want to be there and I want to remember being there and I want the experience to be as clear in my in my mind as possible so yeah doesn't work for me. Um, do you re do you re recommend sorry learning with a limited color palette like this one when you're a beginner? If you're not comfortable with with color, if if um, if you know having a lot of hues in your palette, you know yellows, oranges, reds, uh, greens, blues, violets. If, if that seems a little overwhelming, for sure, for sure. This is not the only limited palette that you can use. You could use like a primary color palette. So you could have titanium white, uh, let's say bismuth yellow or like a lemon yellow. For a red, you could have like a magenta. Uh, I, I've been thinking about this and, and a quinacridone magenta would be a, a really nice only red. And for blue, you could use cobalt um, or you could use phthalo blue. So if if you if you're doing that, that's that's great. You know that's totally fine. If this doesn't work for you and you need an accent of saturation, you could just do a Zorn palette, which your yellow would be lighter and your red would be a little bit lighter and a lot more saturated. So yeah, but having less variables when you're unsure is definitely a way to go when you're starting out. If if you are you know kind of scared of color, which is totally you know. I'm still scared of color. There's still a bunch of colors that I, I would, I am very insecure about using. So that's totally fine. I know Nicolas talked about not using natural bristle brushes for ethical reasons. Does he feel the same way about ivory black? Uh, like bone black, you mean? Yeah, I think um, I've been even trying to find alternatives for for my my regular palette. Um, even in the, in the sense that um, the production of, for example, Cad Red, which is a color that I use and I love, um, the production of it is, you know, it, it's harmful, it's hazardous, so any of those heavy metal pigments, you have to be extra, extra careful. Um, so yeah, I think that nowadays we have alternatives. I was looking at uh, Naftol Red, I think it's a really good alternative to Cad Red. And yeah, for, for blues, it's the same thing. For any single color, or any single um, tool that we have nowadays, you can find, um, you can find alternatives, especially if you, you know, if, if you don't want it to be like a, an animal product. Um, 
there is there are many many alternatives like for these brushes uh, as I was saying um, these are the alternatives the synthetic alternatives that rosemary brushes um, is producing to try to offset the production of these this one the thing is I've had for years many many years so ever since I decided not to uh, buy any and particularly any of the soft hair natural brushes I haven't bought any of those for years now and um, I still have some that I I bought many many years ago but I don't try to use them I mean that to me I guess that that's that's the important part also and so I'm gonna focus on my shape a little bit I'm, and as, as I said I wanted I want her to be pushed that way this is gonna be a lot sharper but I just wanted to have that massive dark there I think it's going to be kind of exciting. Bueno, so I'll describe in Spanish a little bit. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Helen Schierfeck. Um, ella es una pintora finlandesa de finales del siglo XIX, comienzos del XX. Eh, fantástica. Eh, comenzó su carrera como en, en, en Finlandia, desde pequeñita además, desde súper, súper pequeñita, y había pintores que la apadrinaron, entonces le ayudaron como al comienzo de la carrera, pero ella empezó a estudiar pintura como a los 11 años, que era una cosa increíble, o sea, tener ese, ese comienzo a tan temprana edad es impresionante. Y, y eventualmente se va a Francia, eh, porque en países, digamos, pequeños, o sea, Francia era como el epicentro de la pintura en, en ese momento, o sea, a finales del siglo XIX. Entonces ya se va a pintar a Francia por un tiempo, igual el profesor de ella, que era un pintor finlandés, había estudiado en Francia, era como finlandés, alemán, y había estudiado en, en Francia. Entonces también le había enseñado cómo se pintaba, como esa pintura naturalista francesa de esa época. Eh, pero lo más más interesante de Helen eh, Schierfeck es que ella, mmm, ella pues tiene un proceso súper privado, o sea, ella termina cuidando de su mamá, se iba a casar eh, con otro pintor finlandés que era como digamos más popular, aunque o sea, ella obviamente termina siendo infinitamente más popular que él al final, eh, es muy, una pintora enorme. Y, y lo triste es que no se casan con ella, la familia del pintor estaba leyendo, eh, no se casa con, decide que, que ella digamos que no es, eh, no es eh, worthy, ¿cómo se dice eso? No es, eh, eh. o sea, no, no, como que no vale la pena, no es digna, perdón, para casarse, porque ella queda coja por un accidente, pero piensan que es tuberculosis, y entonces la familia de, del pintor dice que, que no, que entonces no se, van, no, no se puede casar con ella. Y, y entonces ella termina sola y termina toda la vida cuidando a la mamá y, y acompañándola como a, en, en sanatorios, pues, o sea, en hogares como geriátricos. Pues. Y, y al final ella también termina así, aunque termina exponiendo y termina siendo súper eh, reconocida y, y respetada porque pues la gente sabía que era una, una pintora increíble. Eh, lo, lo triste, lo más triste es que pues tiene, o no lo más triste, porque de pronto esa, digamos que esa obligación que tuvo con, con su mamá y esa necesidad de cuidarla y de como ausentarse de esa parte social de, de la pintura, termina haciendo que ella sea, pues empiece a pintar las cosas que tiene al lado, que tiene cerca, y entonces empieza a... Hace unas pinturas de la mamá, hace pintura, hace bodegones, o sea, hace pinturas súper intimistas, súper sencillas. Eso obviamente es algo que, por ejemplo, para mí es súper bonito. A mí, a mí me encanta ese tipo eh, de arte. Entonces, cada vez que encuentro ejemplos de, de, de personas y pues, o sea, tan geniales como, como ella que dedicaron la vida a, a ese tipo de pintura, pues se me hace increíble. Entonces... Eh, eh, sí, termina teniendo un proceso un proceso súper curioso porque es bien aislada de, de lo que es como el resto de movimientos, aunque ella, ella es consciente de lo que pasa con la pintura modernista y si se ponen a buscar, por ejemplo, si buscan eh, autorretratos de Helen Schierfeck y, y van a 
o sea, y se dan cuenta cómo esos autorretratos se van eh, distorsionando y van evolucionando a través del tiempo, es como, por eso decía al comienzo, es como de esas pinturas que uno dice, pucha, el proceso de ella es, es muy, muy, como particular, es muy distinto al de otros pintores, y era, ahí leía, era también porque decían que lo que ella sabía, pues ella ya madura, digamos, porque, porque cuando era joven sí logró estudiar y viajar, pero, pero cuando era una pintora más madura, eh, las cosas que conocía de pintura era porque le, le llevaban revistas de arte, le, le llevaban revistas y reproducciones, pero no porque ella fuera realmente parte de un movimiento. Entonces, eso, eso también se me hacía como increíble, o sea, que, que una persona que está eh, aislada, que está separada de, de lo que es como toda, toda la bulla de, de los ismos que estaban ocurriendo ahí a, a finales del 19, comienzos del 20, pues logra hacer un, un tipo de pintura increíble. O sea, eh, entonces, chévere hoy como celebrar un poquitico de, de ese proceso de ella. Would you like to do a figure nude painting week? Is it impossible with YouTube rules? Um, I don't think it's... I, I would have to look into it because... Um, do you guys remember or, or were you guys familiar with uh, uh, Croaky Cafe? That used to be a channel where you could get for free just models posing, you know, kind of like in real time. It was really nice. I thought it was a, a super, super nice uh, channel and they had to take it down partly because they started to charge for, you know, they realized that they could charge for what they were doing, but also because YouTube started, you know, bugging them about um, nudity. So I would have to get, you know, to, to, to see if um, they are so, they're still so uh, stringent about those things, but. Um. Who are some of your favorite illustrators, comic book artists? Oof. Like currently or, you know, when I was, um, when I was young, when I, well, I've gone through so many kind of different moments in my life. But when I was young, when I was very, very young, I, I've told the story that my brother had a uh, Frank Frazetta book. And that's like, for, for those of you who don't know, that's like a fantasy illustration. Uh, very, you know, think of Conan-esque illustrations, although him is like Death Dealer, but he did some Conan too. Um, and I used to love that stuff. I wasn't really that much into fantasy illustration, but for some reason, Frazetta was incredible. And, uh, and I used to read some of the comic books that my brother had traveled with when he was, you know, young, when, that, that my family had decided to, to bring back to uh, Colombia from the U.S., And um, they were, they were a bunch of Neil Adams uh, Batman comic books, which, which were incredible. So that that's my origin in in comic books, I guess, and in illustration. Those two people, because I didn't know anything when I was very very young, and I'm speaking about, I mean, and this wasn't even um, contemporary to me. These these were older comic books. These were my brother, who is seven years older than me. Uh, these were my brother's comic books and my brother's books. So um, I just uh, inherited them from, from him, and, uh, and they were amazing. And it was only until I was older that I could start you know, enjoying comic books uh, a lot more. But the thing was, in, in Bogota, here in Bogota, we used to not get anything. We used to, you know, it, it was very, very hard to get comic books here. Uh, so along with a friend of mine, it's like, The, the one friend that I had in school that liked comic books. I had other friends that, would, you know, we played soccer with and that I did all my, you know, other social life with. But my friend, my artist friend, my only artist friend that liked comic books, we used to just um, go, through, go to comic book stores every, you know, every Friday maybe, just to check and see what they would, you know, what they would have. And um, it was very limited, very, very poor. We, we never got like cooler stuff. Um, so it was only until I traveled really to, I went to study to SVA in New York that I, I went like crazy. I went nuts and I started buying a ton of comic books. I, I, I did have the uh, chance to buy um, graphic novels when, when, 
when I was here. So I remember buying some uh, manga. I remember buying Appleseed and Ghost in the Shell. So that's Masamu Mishiro. Um, I remember, um, let me see, uh, George Pratt, Enemy Ace. I remember, uh, what else did I get? Uh, Hard Boiled, just uh, Frank Miller and Jeff Darrow, a bunch of Sin City I would get to. But that's when I was really older. Um, I got Electra, Bill Sienkiewicz. So, you know, a bunch of old school stuff uh, that, that, was, that was really, I mean, still incredibly amazing work. Uh, so I'm, I, I can't complain, but it was only until I, I went to the, uh, to the U.S. that I realized, oh my God, I remember we had a comic book store on, um, it was on 23rd Street, because SBA was on 23rd Street, and what was it called? It was not Midtown Comics, I, I forget what it was called, or maybe it was Midtown Comics, I don't know, but it was a, a big, not, not even a big, it was a second floor comic book store, and uh, I, I used to go there with, uh, with my friends because I started, when I started the SVA, I was going to be a, a comic book major, so a cartooning major. So I would go there with a couple of my friends, who, who are still my friends uh, to this day, and, um, and we used to get some comic books. But I remember at the beginning, just going crazy. I would spend all the money that I would have on, on, on just buying stuff that wasn't that great, but it was just good because... I had never seen it before, so it was it was really exciting to me. And nowadays, uh, I mean, to me the greatest one. And I have a drawing to my left. To my left, I have a drawing of um, of John Paul Leon that uh, that he did for me, a Batman that he did for me uh, before he passed away. No, no, thank you. Um, and I, I think he was, you know, for sure one of the best draftsman, you know, alive in comic books. I think he, he is definitely one of the greats. Um, and of course I love, and to my right, I have a whole shelf full of <laughs> Hellboys. So, uh, to, so I have this um, adoration for uh, Mike Mignola. That's, um, I think he's, he's a genius and I really, really love Hellboy. Um, but who, who, do, who do I like? Um, uh, Olivier Coipel. Koipel, I'm, pro I'm butchering his name. He's really good. He's a really, really good uh, drafts person. I, I think he's, he's pretty amazing too. So, um, yeah, so I think that's, that, would be, that would be it. If I miss somebody, or if you guys want to suggest like super cool uh, comic book artists that I don't know, just please put them in the comments and Danny for sure is gonna, um, gonna let me know about them. We can check them out a little bit later. Um. I'm gonna try to do a good pronunciation of the name. Yeah, so if we put if we butcher, oh Vincent, oui, oui. <laughs> uh, He says uh, from Maisha. Hello, Nicolas. Oh, Maisha. Hi. How are you? I like your paintings. I, pa I painted a rainbow crab. Will you paint a rainbow crab too? I will. You know, I will definitely try to paint a, a <laughs> rainbow crab. I think yours is for sure gonna be a lot cooler than mine. But I, I will give that a shot. I love that. that that's like uh, one of our What Should I Paint weeks, where you guys just say um, something that seems arbitrary. But Maisha, I'm sure that your rainbow crab is incredible. So I'll give it a shot. I promise you that. You know that if I promise something, I keep my promise. So I'll give it a shot. Do you think learning anatomy is essential for figurative works? Isn't the ability to paint what you see enough? What's the quickest way to master figure drawing? Oof, quickest? Well, let's take quickest out of the equation because it doesn't, quickest doesn't matter in art. Like, there's no point in just trying to rush through something that is going to be super important for you, you know, in, in your process. So if we take that variable away, um, I, I used to like something that, um, that James Jean said, um, I, I read it once somewhere, that all his anatomy came from comic books, that all, his, all everything he knows about anatomy came from comic books. And I used to feel exactly the same way. I used to just copy a bunch of artists that I thought were really good at um, anatomy, comic book artists that I thought were really, really good at anatomy. And I felt satisfied with that. And, um, but honestly, I, I think I paired that with 
uh, drawing for life. My whole education, my whole drawing education at SVA was drawing for life. We had, I think I had two drawing classes that I had to take, and I'll say this while I'm looking for a brush. Um, I had drew two drawing classes that I had to take that were life drawing classes, and I would sit in on an extra drawing class, so that would be three, um, I think they were three hour, if I'm not mistaken, there were three hour drawing classes, three three hour drawing classes, so that would be nine hours, but we had those twice a week. So I had, um, if you think about it, I had 18 hours then of life drawing every week. And I think that that's pretty, pretty cool, pretty good. Uh, sometimes even in painting class, um, our teachers, Steve Assel, and both, uh, well, more Steve than Max, I would say, uh, would prompt us, would tell us to, you know, to draw. If he felt that we were struggling a little bit too much with our painting, he would just tell us, you know, doesn't matter, you, you don't have to paint uh, today, just draw. And obviously, Steve adores drawing. He's an incredible, incredible drafts person. So, um, so he, he would draw also in class a lot, quite a lot, and just watching him draw. You never felt that drawing was like, oh, I couldn't paint, so now I'm stuck with drawing. No, it was an equally powerful way to express. So, um, so yeah, I think that if you study other people that you respect, and if you, um, if you study them through a lot of copying of their work and trying to understand what they're doing, but if you try to find the, the equivalence of what you're learning in a life drawing session, which those are super important, I feel, um, then I, I feel that that's probably the best combination. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the thing that I would um, suggest is most, I don't want to say effective, because if I say effective, then we get into this conversation that I was trying to avoid, which sounds like, oh, what's the easiest or the fastest way to get there? And yeah, you, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to correct you, whomever asked the question, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know your name, but, um, but uh, all I'm saying is that trying to do it quickly should, should be, should not be a, um, should not be kind of like in your hierarchical scale of, of what things are important for my education. No, it'll take as long as it'll take. Like, that's something that we can't really, and we can't really uh, care about and we shouldn't really stress about. Just, just care about um, having like a, a really good process and I feel that that's far more important. Um, hola, Dani and Nicolás. I'll hola. see you in Menorca. Just Woo! moved my life to Spain. Oh, and wow. Once I'm settled, I can start to learn. Yes, okay. Yes, learn from the beginning how to paint. Oh, that's excellent. And in Menorca, we're going to do um, a workshop that doesn't necessarily revolve around already knowing how to paint. So that's going to be super, super cool for you then. How did you meet Danny? If it's not a too personal question. No, no. I somebody asked this the other day um, in uh, in my comments, but we met through a mutual friend. We have a really good friend that we that we love, Nicolas Lich. <laughs> he was yesterday in the. Oh really? Yeah, in the chat. So maybe Nicolas is is uh, is here, but uh, but you know ultimately Nicolas Nicolas. Without it, that being his intention, um, he, you know, that's he's the reason uh, that I met Danny, and um, I think it was a summer break, and uh, we ended up kind of dating, seeing each other, you know, all through that break in the summer, and uh, I think one of the f no probably the f one of the first times we went out, we we went out with Nicolas, and we went out with somebody else. No, we went. Only to, with Nicolas? No, to a birthday. Um, Felipe? Felipe? No, no, but I'm thinking when we went to Chapinero, cuando fuimos a Chapinero, que estábamos con Nicolas, que estábamos por. Ay, I forget, but I okay. think there was. Ah, may, maybe Kelly? Yeah, maybe. So we have a couple of friends that we've, we've, um, we've gone out with and we, we went out with at the beginning. And um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we, 
we we hit it off right from the start. We we didn't expect to feel the way we felt for each other from the start. It was very kind of strange. I've always said that we are kind of like this unusual couple. Um, there is like a, an age difference between Danny and myself. And, um, but none of that ever mattered. Like we just became super quickly friends, like genuine friends. And we had this genuine relationship. And, and Danny, when I met her, she said this thing, and I, I, I think I've talked about this, but I'm super open about this. But she said to me, you know, if we're gonna go out, if we're gonna go out, you have to be 100% honest. And I thought, you know, what is this? You know, what is this witchery? I thought. But like, it was because you were a little like sketchy. No, sketchy. Yeah. No, that's not the word. Sí. <laughs> no, not sketchy. No, como sketchy. Raro. Es como raro. Como... Por eso fue no, super como raro. Hacer raro. <laughs> No! no! Oh my god, I'm trying to convince her that sketchy is clearly <laughs> not the word. No, oh yeah, my because god. I, I didn't show I up asked, with like a raincoat. No, you know, no. Yeah, I wasn't like lurking in the shadows no, just waiting for her to. I asked you like, where were you going? And you were like, um, somewhere. And I was like, no, like, be honest and it's fine. Like, we can be honest to each other. That's why I said sketchy. Yeah, but I think it's yeah, it's a it's terrible the right word. word. No, okay, I'm, I, I'll 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 take that, but um, but I'm gonna try to defend myself and say that sketchy was clearly not the uh, the word. But um, no, no, no. But she said, but I'm gonna be honest here and say that that she did she did ask me to be, you know, like a hundred percent honest. So if we were discussing anything, like we had to be. 100% honest with each other and to me that was like come on that nobody does that nobody I mean there's like white little lies people you know people keep things to themselves like nobody can do this like what you're asking for our relationship just doesn't you know it doesn't work in the real world and because Danny was like no I'm gonna be 100% honest with you and I was like okay that's your first lie you know here I was just starting out being super super doubtful and the truth is that uh, in our relationship we've been 100% honest and I'm super super comfortable saying that because you could say like anyone could say oh Danny I'm gonna tell you this thing about Nicolas that you don't know and Danny knows. Or the you know. other way around. Yeah, or the other way around, exactly. So we both know, I would say, everything about each other, absolutely everything about each other, and it didn't scare us off, and it didn't become this, you know, this weird thing, and it was never uncomfortable. So it sounds strange, it sounds like super peculiar, but she helped me understand that, you know, relationships can be that can be that like you can be a hundred percent honest and I'm not gonna say we have I think we have an awesome relationship I mean I'm gonna say that but um, but it's not perfect I mean there's there's no perfect there's nothing perfect in this world but I would say that we when we have arguments because we have arguments they're like mini arguments like super tiny small arguments that we deal with at that moment like we deal with them super super quickly because since there's no baggage attached to any of that like we're not trying to use the argument as a as a crutch to speak about something else um, that maybe we've held inside for for a long time no we just speak about it openly right then and there and maybe we get kind of like flustered or maybe we get annoyed and then we deal with it so I don't think we've ever, we've been together five and a half years, and I don't think, what's the longest we've been kind of mad at each other? Mm -hmm. Like hours? Yeah, maybe hours. So, <laughs> yeah, and we're not exaggerating, like, I don't know, we, and that's why I say, like, even though I know, I know that, you know, there is obviously a, a ton of things that, um, that are, you know, kind of different about us, and they are super obvious. You don't have to point them out. They are very, very obvious. Um, I have, you know, I, I am just unwilling to believe that there could be somebody so perfect in my life, like in this world for me. And the fact that she, you know, that we, we just met at different moments of our lives 
doesn't mean anything to me. Like, I'm just happy that we met. I'm just like super happy and grateful that we met. So, um, so I'm, I'm just, um, I don't know. I, I just feel that that's one of the things that we had to just be okay with. We didn't have to overcome anything. I mean, ever since from the beginning, I met Danny's parents, I met her sister, I met his sister's uh, partner, I met her grandmothers, her grandfather, I met all her cousins, like everyone is happy for us. And she, the same thing, she met, um, obviously she met my kids and they absolutely adore her. Uh, she met my mother, she met my sisters, which are very hard to, um, to please. So if my sisters, my three sisters liked her is because they immediately knew that she was going to be incredibly good for me, good to me, and she was going to make me a better person. So everything in our lives, like the people that matter the most to us in our lives, they are all incredibly happy that we met and that we are together and that we've been together. Um, anything else doesn't matter, honestly. Anything else is just blah. But, but the people that are, you know, the important people in our lives, the people that we really, really care about, they, they know how much we care for each other and, and they, they really, you know, they, they believe the same thing we believe in, which is that, you know, we, I don't know, it sounds kind of dumb and, and kitschy, but yeah, we were, we were meant for each other, so that's, um, that's nice. Yeah, and it wasn't sketchy, I'm sorry. Sketchy? I just found, yeah. Sketchy, my amor. <laughs> o sea, sketchy. In Cotilla Vinicius, yeah, it says of dubious safety, potentially harmful. Safety, I know. Dangerous and you're not, I'm sorry. I know, <laughs> yeah. That's that's somebody you meet like at a sub, if you're taking the subway at like 3.30 in the morning, it's like, oh, that dude is sketchy. Sí, sí, perdón. Hola, no sé si lo has comentado antes. Eh, porque no te gusta pintar en acrílico sería un buen reto, ¿no? Saludos desde las Islas Canarias. No, 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 no es que no me guste, es que no sé. <risa> es que no sé pintar en acrílico, como que se me dificulta porque mi cabeza, mi cabeza entiende la pintura como desde el óleo, entonces el, el acrílico se me hace complejo de entender. Eh, los tiempos de secado del acrílico, yo soy, yo soy una persona súper... Bueno, ayer estaba diciendo que una cosa que he entendido es que soy paciente, pero yo creo que por dentro soy súper impaciente. Y, y, y parte de la forma como yo pinto es, es, tiene que ver con entender o saber que, mi, que la superficie de la pintura es accesible en todo momento. Me es accesible en todo momento. Entonces, yo me estreso muchísimo si me empiezo a dar cuenta que un color lo pongo como una aguada de color o pongo una masa de color y cambia, o sea, se transforma, que eso es lo que pasa con el acrílico, que cambia un poquitico el valor tonal, cambia un poquito la saturación y cuando seca, pues es distinta a lo que, a lo que yo puse eh, originalmente. Ese tipo de cosas como que me estresan muchísimo, no sé por qué, pero... Entonces, no, no es, no es más, no es, no es que yo tenga como una... Una que, eh, una filosofía que me impida creer que hay beneficios en el acrílico, sino que es que la verdad no, no lo sé usar. O sea, es, eh, si soy sincero contigo, no sé, creo que es más una um, incapacidad mía que cualquier otra cosa. O sea, yo por ejemplo, ahorita que estaba hablando de James, yo veo las pinturas de James Jean que son en acrílico y son increíbles. Entonces, eso no. O sea, eso habla de, de, de lo mucho, del rango además que él tiene, que él puede pintar con cualquier cosa que se le dé la gana. Y de la, no sé, de la incapacidad mía de, de comprender cómo lo hace. Que yo siento que él es, él es un genio así absoluto. Entonces, eh, sí, es más desconocimiento. Yo hablo más desde el desconocimiento, si te soy sincero. Pero sí, hemos hablado con Dani. O sea, nosotros hacemos pocas semanas eh, formales, como de técnica, pero eh, sí hemos hablado de hacer una semana de acrílico. Eh, Nico and Dani, did you ever think about making a fundamentals week or month in OPL, discussing the foundations and how to study each one? I think I, I, I was kind of saying this yesterday, how I'm 
thinking that this could be cool to do next year, that because we are going to do live weeks next year, that maybe some of the, those weeks could revolve around that. Y you know what has always stopped me a little bit from, from making um, those sort of weeks? The fact that there's so many people out there that are so good, and sometimes I feel like either I would be very, like, quite redundant on, on what they are teaching, or that I just feel that they are doing a far, far better job. So I just always point to people like uh, James Gurney, for example, so that they can go there and, and you know, find, find a, a person that is brilliant at, um, at explaining those, those really fundamental aspects of painting. And I've kind of not shielded myself um, in that, that way, but I guess that that's left me with the ability to concentrate on, on speaking about a far more, oof, I don't know, private process of, of painting. Like I think our painted lives has, has, a, has an element where that, that's really cool where it, it probably mm, it probably centers more around the the reflection of painting. So what what goes what happens while you're painting or what happens after you're done painting and you know you're thinking about your painting, you're trying to make sense of what you did, rather than saying this is how you paint. Like these are the these are the top five things that you should. <laughs> That you should uh, think about when you're starting a painting. Like, I, I think we we consciously try to avoid some of some of those um, not traps, but some of those falling into those categories, just so that we could concentrate a little bit more on the again the, the part where you're just trying to make sense. You're trying to figure out uh, why is it that you took certain decisions and how those decisions either brought you closer to the intent that you had established for yourself or farther. And if they, you know, took you farther from that intent, then why, why was it that you deviated from, from that path? Like, what didn't you understand from, from that path that you thought was so clear, that you thought was so, you know, visible in front of you? Um, I, I think that this this exercise that we've been doing kind of got its character eventually uh, by concentrating on on those things because if we just if we became another channel of 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 telling people how to paint like i said i think there's tons of wonderful people out there that do that and they probably do that far far better than i could um so i think that you know, if we're going to do some of that next year, it's going to be my with my own spin to it, just so that I feel comfortable with with doing something like that, because I feel that I could never be um, or I could ne never teach as well as um, James Gurney could teach, for example. I think that he is just the most incredibly generous artist that I've ever met. A lot of what we do is is really a a way of acknowledging how generous he's been. I mean, if it wasn't for him, um, I don't think I, I would have had this this uh, desire to to say let's make everything available to people. Um, you know, regardless of of if you can pay for it, if you can't, let's try to fight for that that you know that idea of availability. If it wasn't for Gurney, who when I was um, you know. He started that blog because, of course, he's James Gurney. He, he has a blog, um, but he probably started it. I don't know, fifteen years ago for sure. Uh, maybe even, you know, more than that. Um, and everything he he would put out was was just free. It was just for everyone to read. Uh, the videos that he puts up in YouTube they are edited, but they are incredibly valuable uh, videos. So. Yeah, I, I just feel that when there are people that can do what you try to do, but so much better, like sometimes it's just easier to say, hey, you know what, just go to those people because they're going to be like incredible teachers. Um, so go, go to the source. That's, that's what I always feel. But if we do it, again, if we do it in the future, I'm going to try to make, make that kind of like my own, you know? 
it, it's going to be, if I do it, it's going to be done in a way where I feel super comfortable. And I'm not just repeating every single thing that any or every other artist in the internet, you know, says. Because fundamentals are very simple. They're, they're very few and they're very simple. And at some point you go like, okay, you're just saying the exact same thing I already knew. You're just maybe using different words or, or you're just um, trying to exhibit that uh, in, in, a, in a slightly different way. But in, in essence, like, they are the same. It's the same information. Um, so if I understand that I can do it justice, that I can do it with my own kind of little spin, like, I'll definitely, I'll definitely give it a shot, for sure. Um, how, how do you know where to put the right colors with a black and gray reference? What's your advice, and how do you paint without copying the exact same photo? Oh, for, for this one, it was super easy because I went with... A di I was looking at some of her um, self-portraits, and... ¿Tú puedes cargar imágenes a... Um, ¿Acá? No. ¿A OBS? ¿A OBS? Sí. Eh, ¿Live? Sí. Ah, bueno. Si quieres, ahí pues me en, demoro, pero sí. en el desktop. No, en mi desktop yo ya okay. yo ahí tengo un, un poco tonón de, de autorretratos. So I'm asking Danny if she could upload uh, to, to OBS so she could give, uh, give you guys like a sense of, of some of uh, mm -hmm. Helen's self-portraits particularly. So watching, you know, looking at her self-portraits, it, it was very easy that I, I didn't want to try to do anything that was uh, remotely naturalistic. I think that um, to, to be true to her more modernist edge, like we had to, sí, pues, todos los que quieras, sí, son. Pero es que no veo. O sea, ah, veo solo uno. y como más, eh, baja. O sea, en, en... Ah, mira, 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 ahí este? arriba. Sí, este. son todos esos, es que son distintísimos. Okay. Déjame ver ese, no sé cuál es ese. No, 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 este no, te toca clic, clic, izquierdo y... Este. No, 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 ese no es. Entonces. Pero los de arriba, los que parecen... Este. Sí, por ejemplo, ese, ese es un, uno que hizo ella jovencitica. So the one Danny is going to show you, yeah. it's her when she was younger, um, when she was like super young and doing what is basically like French naturalist painting. And uh, yeah, yeah, so that's where she started. And y ahora buscam, that's where she started. And let's look for a, a far more modern one. Danny's right next to me, but I'm not wearing my glasses, and I have no <laughs> idea what she's searching. So she's asking me if it's this one or that one, and I can't tell. So. Listo. Eh, Los que estaban arriba. No, Por, es que arriba. Esta. Ah, una es esta? So, uh, a ver, tengo esta. Sí, sí, este también es. Lo pongo este. Sí, si quieres. Okay. Okay. So she'll show you another example, but honestly, if you if you guys Google. Uh, Helen Scherfbeck uh, self-portraits, you'll see how, you know, varied and distinct, like, they all are. And, um, and she became super, super abstract, super simplified, gorgeous, you know, small shapes. Uh, it was, it's, uh, it's glorious. So I, I took that idea of simplifying something. I said, okay, what if, what if the upper part we use, you know, raw sienna, just make it raw sienna dominant, so it's going to look like an early uh, Tim Wilson painting. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is dominant, it's chipped. And so what if we simplify it, you know, this idea that's, that's very prevalent in her own painting, what if we, if we simplify some of these variables um, and, uh, you know, put, put that against that simplified version of her portrait against like this super nice um, sharp sharp ish you know sharp in comparison I would say uh, shape of her dress that I think it's um, that's 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 really it's one of the things that really attracted me once I saw that photograph so and I wanted to push her to the side I, I would have loved to have her portrait like right here but then these shapes would have gone out of frame, so, and I needed these shapes. I actually super, super needed these shapes. And I wanted to fit the belt, but I ended up sacrificing the belt. So that I, I know I did. 
so yeah, so today was more a matter of not really thinking about color in a naturalist sense. I think, it, again, to pay homage to her and to acknowledge how brilliant she was with the, um, you know, with the development of, of her own work, I think it was nice if, if, if we could simplify um, this painting a little bit and, uh, and just concentrate on maybe gesture, um, just the expressiveness uh, of her, of her, you know, that look. It's just incredible. So sometimes when I do these paintings, I imagine myself, I mean, I can't do this. So this is not like a, I'm, I'm thinking that I, I, I'm actually able to execute this that I'm gonna describe. But I, I'm very happy if by the end, it looks as if, it looks like something that she would have done. Like it looks like a painting that if you would have seen it as part of a series, of self-portraits, you could have said, oh yeah, she, she could have totally done a painting like that. Like she could have portrayed herself like that. Like that makes sense for her. Like I, I try to imagine myself doing those sort of exercises. Again, it doesn't speak about my own ability because she is a thousand times the painter that I'll, I'll ever be. But, um, but it makes fun. It, it honestly just makes fun for me. And it makes me think about her more than I think about myself while I'm painting, which is also kind of cool. Mm, I got a Kristen asks, I recently left an, in an internship at a shared studio and I'm now painting on my own. I'm finding mo motivation harder now than I'm alone since there is no more accountability. Mm. Any tips to overcome that? Yeah, it's super hard. It's super, super hard. Um, Christy, I used to call my teacher, Max, you know, I think maybe a year or two years even um, after I had come back to uh, Colombia from New York uh, because, and I used to just show him what I've been doing and tell him, what do you think? What do you think? Because I needed that sense of validation from him. Like, I, I just wasn't used to me being the person that would um, ultimately set the, the, the standards for me or, or, or I, I didn't know how to evaluate things for myself. I just didn't. And it was super, super tough for me. And I remember one day that I was calling Max and, um, and he stopped me. He was like, why are you calling me? He probably doesn't even remember these things, but he said, why are you calling me? Like, why do you keep calling me? Just keep painting. You're doing well. Just keep at it. Keep painting. Uh, and you know, it was kind of tough, uh, what I would consider like fatherly love at that moment because that's probably what I needed to hear um, and, and I needed to understand that from then on, I, I couldn't ask other people questions like, yeah, sure, like if you have friends and if you have to, if you want to run what you're doing through your friends and, and ask them if they feel it's, you know, it's cool or if it works, that's totally fine, which I honestly, it, that doesn't work for me if I have to be super, super honest, like, I don't like those things. I don't like um, uh, asking people for, for advice when I feel that these are like questions that only I can answer. So, because the, the more I ask advice from people, the more I realize that um, I am paying attention to what they're saying. And if you ask enough people for their advice, you're gonna have so many, so many different um, comments about what to do that it's gonna drive you insane. So at some point I realized I, I just have to trust myself. I, I really have to start trusting myself even if I mess up. So a lot of this has to do with just fear of messing up and, and owning up to those moments where you just mess up. And we have to teach ourselves to be okay with that. And I am grateful that I'm at a point where I relish the, you know, messing up. I love when a paint, a painting just goes sideways and I can't, you know, I either can't save it or I just can't understand how to save it or it, it's so cool because it's a learning experience. So for me, those moments are amazing. But I think that we have to be willing to go through those moments. And that has a lot to do with motivating oneself. You know, you have to push yourself, you have to be excited about what you're doing, but being excited about what you're doing is not super tough. 
it, the toughest part is when things don't go the way you want them to go, and, and suddenly you find yourself in front of a painting that's horrible, or that, you know, distances itself really, really far from, from what you had intended that painting to be. So that to me is far more important than saying, hey, have a schedule or just be, be super, um, you know, have this like this healthy schedule that you can meet. Um, I think that those things are fine. I mean, everyone kind of knows how to do those things. I think that if we have worked for a day in our lives, we know how to keep a schedule. So I, I think it's harder just to keep ourselves mo motivated when things just don't go as we planned. So yeah, just know that there's no other way to do this. Like nobody else can take these steps for you. And as, so as soon as you convince yourself that that's the only road, you know, that that's the only way to do this, that, that as much as you love your friends or your teachers or your colleagues, the only person that's going to be capable of pushing you further is yourself, then you know, you're going to start understanding that it's also super exciting to forge this new path. Like, like the, you are responsible for constructing your new path. And that's really cool. It's scary as hell, but it's super cool also. So, What do you recommend to make the color more interesting? More interesting. But... But let's, let's talk about something. I mean, you could argue that color right now here, it's almost like inconsequential. It would be super boring. It's like a, a yellow dominant head up there, like earth yellow dominant head, and then it's pretty much like black and white, you know? It's ivory black and titanium white in the bottom, which is not entirely, there's, there's like little hints of um, that red ochre uh, here and there. But, so in terms of, color relationships, I think this painting would be very simple, very boring. Um, if you try to describe it, it would certainly be kind of boring. But there's, you know, I, when I look at it, there's nothing boring about it. I mean, at least to me, to me, it's like super exciting. I, I have to believe that it is exciting. If not, I mean, I'm the one who's painting it. If I think it's boring as hell, then I'm for sure doing something wrong. So, um, so yeah, I just, I don't think that you can equate exciting with just using super, you know, um, super saturated or super bright um, colors. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that you have to be okay with colors at their worst being, you know, incredibly exciting. At their simplest being incredibly exciting. Or at least being good enough tools to make a really interesting painting. So. And I feel that that's true for, for every, every single palette that I've worked with, I think that that's always been true, so. Eh, Mirta nos cuenta que conoce a una persona de edad que recibió una pintura de ella. De no, ella. ¿en sí. serio? Sí, oh, sí, sí. Increíble. Sí. sí Qué chévere. Bien. Increíble. O sea, obviamente... Bueno, no, creo que en vida, si no estoy mal, en vida igual era una persona como reconocida, o sea, el, la capacidad de, de ella era, era reconocida. Lo que pasa es que era como no logró, digamos, logró salir de Finlandia, no quiero que esto tampoco suene como algo, eh, como, ah, sí, es que era Finlandia, entonces no, como todo lo que no fuera París en ese momento, entonces no, no importaba, eh, pero, pero como no logra salir, pues entonces se vuelve también eh, muy local. Eh, pero pues no importa. Y por eso es que yo creo que con, con el paso del tiempo, pues la gente que no, no conocía la obra de ella la ha ido descubriendo y han hecho exposiciones súper bonitas de ella, unas retrospectivas súper bonitas de ella en muchísimos museos del mundo, eh, que yo creo que eso ha también ayudado a que gente la, la, la conozca, gente que desconocía la obra de ella la conozca. Pero genial. Eh, espérate porque no veo preguntas no, pues ahorita des, Pues después de lo de sketchy no. eh, Todo el mundo se fue corriendo No, 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 no. ¿Cómo se te ocurre? Ahí está tu mamá Our sketchy lives No Ay. Sí eh, A ver A few of her self-portraits have Gary K. 
Kelly vibe to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say, well, let's say that Gary Kelly has her vibes. Oh. Yes, is that good? Yes, it's because it's in the middle of the seat. It's in the middle of the seat. No, the head is in the middle. Ah, yes? Yes. It's like the moon. Yes. Danny was telling me that my bald head just showed up. Um, that's what she has to deal with when she's editing the videos. She has to take that bald head of mine constantly out of the videos. So it's never, it's never nice for her, never. And she has to listen to my, my voiceovers like crazy. So I don't know how we do it. Like we have to work. If you really think about it, we have to be perfect for each other for, you know, we see each other so much and we hear each other so much every single day that if we didn't work out together, it, it would just, it would be hell, so. Um, ¿Alguna vez pensaste en pintar una sola pintura durante toda una semana? ¿Cambiar a un enfoque más estratificado, por ejemplo? Sí, no, no sé qué tanto logré hacer, eh, digamos, hablar de capas realmente y de construcción de pintura en, en, en una semana. Se puede, se puede. Pero sí, eh, todo estoy 100% seguro, o sea, estoy, no, esto no es como, no, seguro voy a hacer eso y nunca lo hago el próximo año, no. Todo eso, créanme que eh, van a ser alternativas que se van, a, se van a hacer el próximo año porque lo chévere es que ahora ya podemos hacerlo. O sea, estábamos, la decisión de no hacerlo no es que nadie nos estuviera obligando porque pues lo, lo chévere de un proyecto como el que tenemos es que pues nosotros somos los dueños de lo, de lo que hacemos, de lo que queremos decir, de lo que, de el, el tipo contenido. de pintura que vamos a hacer, del contenido, exacto. Entonces, eh, era más, creo que siempre lo quisimos mantener como algo sencillo, como, como lo mismo, porque es que también dentro de la consistencia, pues hay algo muy bonito. O sea, y si la gente nos está empezando a conocer, también era chévere que, que se dieran cuenta que, que había algo como que siempre iba a estar allí, eh, independientemente de, de, de la, digamos, de la temática de las semanas. Entonces, eso también es súper bonito, como, como tratar de generar una consistencia. Es, no es fácil y es y súper es chévere. Entonces, creo que nos concentramos más en eso es, estos dos años. Mm, y ahora que se acaba pues, la, la meta que nos habíamos puesto inicialmente, que... Okay, se acabó súper rápido, para serles sinceros, esto pasó... Se demoró mucho, pero pasó muy rápido. No, no, no sé, sé si hay que... lo mismo. ¿Pero qué quiere decir eso, Linda? O sea... Pues que fue muchísimo trabajo. Sí. Y era mucho trabajo cada día, pero pasó volando. Sí, o sí. O sea, en ese se sen... sentía sí. mucho en el momento y ya uno mira para atrás y pasó rapidísimo. Sí, en, en el a momento... A eso me refiero. Sí, sí. Mucho, es rápido, pero lento. Exacto. <risa> pero... Eh, pero sí, sí, sí fue, sí fue mmm, extrañísimo como, como entender el ritmo de lo que estábamos haciendo. Entonces sí, de pronto por eso es que pues, este tipo de, de proyectos, o por lo menos para nosotros, pues, eh, era, era importante primero como reconocer lo que estábamos haciendo para ahorita pues, tener la opción de decir, bueno, tratemos de ampliar esto como de ampliar el vocabulario y las posibilidades de, de, lo que, de lo que estamos haciendo. Y también, eh, I, we also want to, because um, we're giving spoilers away, you know, we? yesterday and today. No, we, sí, yeah, you. I, we, yeah, but we're also, um, we're also, even though the last book I, I put out um, was very tough, was very, very tough for me, um, I did lose like money and, and it was, oof, it was a painful, it was a, a very painful, um, very, very painful experience, I would say. The book that we did before, because I, I was lucky enough to do those two um, um, crowd-funded projects uh, with Danny, uh, the first one was tough, but I was, you know, I was able to manage uh, just doing that book but um second one was even tougher and it was a smaller book it was like a in theory it it should have been like a smaller project and oh my god it took everything away and you could ask danny 
right now because many times I just speak about this myself, but Danny went with me to the uh, printing press because we had to print this book. Tres veces, no. Tres veces. Tres veces y la cuarta fue la final. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was terrible. It was, it was horrible. It was so disappointing. Just, um, and it was never, it, it's not because we were asking things, like we, we would uh, get the book, we would have the book that was printed in our hands. And it wasn't that we were trying to, to say, oh, I don't like it or I don't feel it's good enough, so I'm just going to complain. No, these were like things that, you know, any printing press, like mistakes that no professional printing press, and this is the biggest printing press, one of the biggest in Latin America. It's like, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible it, to go there and to see all their machines and it's amazing. But they made mistakes with our work that are almost like incomprehensible. So we had to ask them to print again and again. And, and then they fixed that mistake, but made another. Yeah. So it was, yeah, so it was, ending. yeah, it was very, very frustrating, but <laughs> we are stupid. So we, we want to see, we want to see if we can put out another book and it would be a very nice sort of conclusion to, to what, um, the project has been. And, you know, the, I, I thought about making like, um, editions with paintings because that's what we've done in the past. Like, We've had editions with um, drawings and we've had editions with paintings and they have like different price points and, and people have been super, super generous. But, uh, but we, don't, we don't know yet what to do. And, and ideally we just want to put a book out um, uh, and, and have the book encompass uh, what has been, you know, the, the things that we have learned also from, from the project that we think can be very useful to, um, to the people, so it's not just a, a compendium of, of the paintings that are obviously available to everyone if they want to download them. They're always in the, uh, in the video's description. So it's not just about that. I think I would have um, a nice opportunity to also write about those experiences, and I think that it would, be, it would be really nice. I think that this project has taught me a ton about um, about what it means to to feel like you're trying to do something for yourself, you know, by, well, in our case, it's not me, it's but by ourselves, you know, I think that, I said it yesterday, if we, if we weren't such a good team, none of this would have happened, so, um, I think it would be a nice conclusion, I think we, we've talked about it, and even though we would have to be super, super clear, we would have to probably not print it here in Colombia, I mean, not, not because Colombia is not a wonderful place to print books, it's just that we, we got damaged, I think, with the, uh, with the other book that we, uh, we printed with the last one. So we're probably not gonna print it here, so we're looking at printing options and we're looking at, you know, shipping, up. shipping options. Yeah. Um, shipping is, is, for those of you who don't know, shipping is immensely more expensive than the actual printing of the book. Printing of the book can be very simple. Unless you print in the U.S., because there are presses in the U.S. that, oh my God. I mean, I'm sure they do an incredible job, but wow, they're expensive. I mean, like, ridiculously expensive. Um, so, again, I'm sure they are incredible designers, and the presses are, are fantastic, and they are great professionals. But, woof, when you compare that to the prices that we get here, or the prices in Canada, or the prices in China... Oh, it's night and day. So um, we just want to make things kind of make sense for us if we do this book. But hopefully, like, we'll run that idea by you guys. And, and hopefully if we, if we can sense that there's, there's enough people that would be interested in something like that, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and we'll try to go for it. Again, that, it means a ton of energy and a ton of effort, especially in the shipping and the, in the logistical part of getting the books then out to everyone because um, that's tough. And, and that first book, I think, worked because I was able to pack and ship all those books by myself. I went to my brother's house for like, I don't know, 20 days, over 20 days. Um, and I did everything by myself. 
I learned how to go to, you know, import lawyers and, and how to paint in, and how to pay import taxes. I had no idea how to do any of those things when, you know, uh, when I was just painting. So it's actually super interesting. It's, it's super nice. And I, I just rented a U-Haul and I went and I got all my books and I would travel with my U-Haul to uh, the uh, USPS every single day with like, you know, 40, 50 books that were packed um, by myself. Uh, and, and, and I would ship them just like that. I would print my uh, shipping labels and stamps.com because I think that that's the most, like the cheapest way to do it. I helped you with that. Oh yeah, you helped me. Danny helped me doing the, all the database, like all the, Excel, all the Excel tables for every single one of those, um, every single one of those people that we had to ship. So um, I even, it was very nerve wracking. Like I would mess up when I was typing those things and then I would print them and then I would realize I had messed up but the thing with stamps.com is that they already charge you once they print them. So shipping to um, overseas used to be, well, not used to be, I'm sure that nowadays it's even more expensive, but um, it was for that larger book, it was about $65, $70 to ship overseas. And um, so imagine me like printing these things, printing like a $65 printing label to then realize like I messed up somewhere in, in, in the address. Uh, oh my, it was so nerve wracking, so frustrating. But I think that with that book, we, we honestly didn't have a lot of issues. Some people didn't get the book and I tried, like Danny is witness to this. Like with many people, I tried, I even sent the book like three times to this one person because they would say, oh, I haven't gotten it yet. And, and something had happened in his local um, mailing you know system and um, and I tried my best like I really really tried my best to have every single person get you know the uh, the book that they had paid for and the you know on the sad circumstance that maybe they didn't like we reimbursed like a bunch of books too um, I don't remember how many but I would always tell Danny it's like always super sad because I was losing money like left and right but I would always tell her, you know what, they, they didn't get the book, I, I have to pay them back. And so it was a lot of losing money. So a book is never like great business, but I think it's a, it's a really nice opportunity to, um, to close like uh, a chapter in, in this process. I feel that it's, it, it can be like a really nice thing, so. Yeah, um, they are saying, I want the book, take my money. <laughs> I found about our painted lives after the last book crowdfunding had ended. This is great news. Just take my money. Y otra persona dice, Have you thought about doing a series of books or prints every year as like 2021 seasons, season of our painted lives around the end of the year, like a season finale treat? Oh, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, prints, we only have experience with prints. Um, with a G clay print that we did for the first book and that one was pretty nice if I remember correctly how many books did we ship? Como 500 eran? Cuando, like 500 the first one the big uh, one primero? yeah I think it was like Como 500 600. no no no, no. 600, no? no I think it was like I think okay. it was like 500 books well, like in total and um, so we did so I'm guessing that we did around 500 prints and that those we got printed I think on the West Coast because I was with my brother and he was in the West Coast he was in San Diego at the time and those cost me about two thousand maybe two grand and that, those were really nice they were about what size were they 12 by 12 inches I think prints they were very nice they were prints of a, of a painting that, that we had yeah but but I but ended up printing yeah, no, and I ended up printing far more books. Mm. So I think it was either like 450 or, yeah, closer to like 450 books um, that we ended up shipping. And um, yeah, so, so that was like $2,000 to make. I'm always like super open with money, by the way. I don't like people that are don't, that will never tell you how much things were. Like I'll, like I'll, I'll be super open and I'll be super happy just telling people, oh, I paid, you know, this much for this. And maybe if I overpaid, well, then I learned that I overpaid. And maybe if I had a good deal, then people can tell me, oh, that was a good deal. And that's pretty cool. 
Um, but yeah, we, we paid around two grand for those. And those were really nice. They actually packed them really well. And, and it, was, it was super easy to, to then kind of fit them in, in this box, this pizza box that that book was eventually uh, mailed in. Um, but that's about it. I, I've always felt that, I don't know, like my work doesn't lend itself to be like a nice print. You know, um, whenever I see James Jean's prints, like those are prints, like, oh my God, those are prints. Like that's like state of the art printing right there. Um, but whenever I see my paintings, it's like they are paintings. Like it's, it's almost like they're meant to be enjoyed as paintings. I don't know if people would enjoy them as prints, but I don't know. Again, that's, you know, you guys let me know because I, I that's, uh, that's an idea I've, I've um, completely, you know, uh, imagined for myself well, of how, in terms of how my work is perceived, so. Have you ever made a wig painting your followers' portrait? My followers' portrait? No. That sounds a little, you know, very specific. <laughs> no. Pintar a tus followers, me parece chévere. No, specific. No estoy diciendo como bueno o malo, pero, pero, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I would pick that. Maybe just do, like, like a random thing where people upload pictures or send us pictures. And, and we've been, honestly, we have a really nice, um, I think the Our Painted Lives family is super nice because we've never gotten anything, you know, when we ask for comments or, or um, you know, stuff like that. We've never gotten anything that's like, um, just people trying to make like a dumb, stupid joke or, no, 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 people are kind of cool, they're nice. I think that, if you if you are if you have good vibes, you always attract good vibes. So that, that's always been my philosophy in life. I feel. Um, so yeah, so we haven't had idiots um, just sending us. I, I wonder how you know the photos that people would send, or or they would they could tag them. So you know we could ask them to tag them and. and yeah, that's better. Yeah, so that they like know a that. Like post with right, a hashtag right. or something. Like right, that. so that they have to adhere to like you know, the horrible um, Instagram censor laws. <laughs> but um, but that, that could give us like a, a better sense of, of what, to, um, what to expect. What do you feel are some of the best ways to develop likeness in a portrait? Oh, I'm so terrible at that. I just, I, I really don't feel like I'm good at painting likenesses if I have to be super, super honest here. I, I, I've never, in that sense, I've never felt like I'm a good portrait painter. Um, I think that I can paint, or I can, mm, I can recognize the sort of humanity in somebody, if that makes sense. I don't even know if that's kind of what I'm trying to say, but um, I, I think I recognize things that are not really tied to what somebody looks like, because when we are too overly concerned about what a person looks like, that's, that's when you get people um, tracing photographs or projecting photographs or gridding photographs just so that they are, you know, they can be 100% sure that the information that they see in a photograph or in whatever they're looking at, whatever reference or whatever, you know, if you're working from, from, from the model or if you have a sitter right in front of you, and if you work on site size or if you measure the crap out of everything, well, in many ways, that's, that's going to be the easiest way to, to guarantee that you are following, you're being faithful to the information that's there. Um, I don't think there's, there's anything kind of mysterious about doing those things, to be perfectly honest, because they're kind of simple to understand. You just, you just measure everything. Everything has to meet at certain points. You just create for yourself tons of points of reference um, through your painting, and that's it. Like, if that's the sort of um, faithfulness that you want when you're doing a portrait, great. But when I paint a person, I'm always, like, super interested in things that are harder to grasp. You know, it's very nice when you can say, oh, that doesn't look... Like, I love saying something like, that doesn't look like that person, but that totally feels like that person. I love those things. I love when those things happen. Like, and to me, that's super possible. That, that's something that's entirely possible when you're painting somebody. That, that you feel that, that 
it doesn't quite make sense why that person's essence is there, but they, they it, but it is there. Like you totally feel that that's that person. Um, that's what I've always felt is is um, is something that I'm far more sensitive to, rather than than saying, oh, I, I, I can, you know, I'm good at painting a likeness. But don't get me wrong, painting a likeness is super. Understanding how to paint a likeness well is super tough. And if, if you can do that well, you have a great road ahead of you and if you enjoy it, because you can become a very successful portrait painter if, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, that is for sure true. There's not a lot of people that have that ability. And, and the ones that do, they are sought after and, and they are, you know, people want their portrait painted you know, by them because they are incredibly good at what they do. Um, I, I'm, I'm not that person. I always tell people if, when they were in, if they're interested in me painting a portrait, I'd much rather tell them, you know, instead of a portrait, let me paint a painting with you in it. Like a painting first, it's, it has to behave like a painting first, and then it has to, you know, you're going to be inhabiting this painting. But for my own sake, for my own sanity, I have to, you know, sort of explain it to myself that way. I have to visualize it that way. Because if not, then oof, it becomes a little too overwhelming for me, I feel. Do you ever get inspired by film? Any favorite movies or direct directors? Directors? Can I say that? Um, yeah, we, we spoke about it. Pues linkear. Danny is going to link the week that we had of um, composition, ¿te acuerdas? Como studies in composition sí, sí, from sí. movies. Sí. Yeah, yeah, so Danny's going to link that. Um, but I remember, did I mention Yorgos Lantimos in that week? Sí. I did. Creo. Oh, yeah, 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 I did. I did, I did. Hateful Eight. Yeah. Grand Budapest. Quentin. Yeah, Wes. City of Lost Children. Oh, yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. Alps. Yeah, Alps. So, yeah, Yorgos Lantimos, I feel, is, is he's a genius. He's an absolute genius. And who's the director? ¿Te acuerdas la que vimos del director sueco de lo de la paloma? Who's the director? I think he's uh, okay. Swedish, maybe, or Danish. Um, uh, Pigeon, what's that title of that? That movie. Maybe somebody here helps. Uh, Roy Anderson. No. Dice la película una paloma sentada en una rama. Sí, sí, sí. Esa, esa. Existencia. Sí, estoy bien. Sí, esa película. Roy Anderson. Ese es Roy Anderson. Sí, la yeah. película del director sueco Roy. Ya, yeah, uff, brutal. ¿Te acuerdas? Sí. Brutal. Uff, increíble, increíble. Eh, sí. Divina. A mí normalmente me gustan como ese tipo de películas, como... Era en, en inglés. ¿no? Ah, sorry. Pero, pero el que, quien, la, quien nos ayudó está en español. ¿Quién Entonces, nos ayudó? No, yo, es, con el yo título. te dije. Ah, ¿no fue alguien que la puso no, en español? No, fui yo. Ah, grande, Dani. Grande. <risa> grande, linda Dani. Um, so, yeah, so, Roy Anderson. So, yeah, I'm, I'm usually super sensitive to, or I think Danny and I have a, a kind of like, a, we, we tend to like uh, movies that are sort of similar, but or, uh, we, we tend to enjoy um, beautiful composition, beautiful cinema, cinematography, um, just wonderful acting, acting that doesn't even feel like acting. I feel that that's, that's amazing. But, um, but yeah, I think that Wes, Yorgos Lantimos are... are those big eyes, I wanted to do something with her big eyes, they're kind of buggy, and she herself paints them super buggy in some of her self-portraits, so I wanted to try that uh, with, with my painting too. And I'm, um, I'm also losing some of the edges uh, towards, the, um, towards the contour of, of the, uh, of the portrait. I really, I really like that too. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll find them a little bit sharper. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that's, 
that's working with the with the painting. So yeah, you know. Yeah, so I think Danny just linked. If if you guys were unfamiliar with that week, and we speak about movies that we enjoy and um, and uh, sequences that we enjoy, compositions that we enjoy. ¿Qué pasó? Tu mamá dice rápido pero lento. ¿Cómo así cuando se acaba este proyecto? ¿Cómo así, mamá? <laughs> so my mom is asking. My mom is being surprised that this project has an ending. Because my mom is in, my mom is live right now too. My mom is amazing, by the way. So show her some love. She's incredible. She's always in my comments. She's always the uh, the person that comments. You are the greatest of the greats. You're extraordinary painter. God with a brush. Jesus. Jesus with a knife. No, with a, that sounded weird. Jesus with a no. palette knife. <laughs> so my mom is always like the the the. The nicest comments you'll see are always coming from my mother. So, sí, mamá, el, el proyecto como lo diseñamos inicialmente, pues es, es de dos años. O sea, el proyecto se acaba. Pero pues vamos a seguir con eh, haciendo algo distinto, pero, pero digamos que los, los videos así como editados y que producimos. Eh, día tras día, sí, de pronto eso se va a acabar, mamá divina. Eh, a ver. Nos dicen que Dog, Dog Tooth is yeah, the best perfect. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Uh, do you have a recommendation for a beginner palette, black and white, or similarly a warm and cool pigment with white? You know what I used to like a, a ton? Um, there, there used to be a moment where I was working with burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and uh, titanium white. And I used to love that palette. I used to really, really love that palette. You could paint so much with that palette. How is lasagna cadaver? Nos preguntan. How is? Tintin. ¿Qué? Tintin, ¿te acuerdas? Oh, Tintin. Christine Yeah. Gonzalez. How are you, Tintin? Amazing to, um, to hear from you. Lasagna Cadavers is going strong. Um, I'm sure it's worthless. Like, the website is absolutely worthless, the uh, domain name. <laughs> but um, but I'm, I'm going to continue to pay for it like an idiot for as long as I can. Lasagna Cadavers. Sí, pues, no hay Um, can you make a video of how how to blend watercolors? Well, I wish I wish I could, but um, Ay, it, pero, how, how good uh, am I in watercolor, Danny? Mm, not the not best great. One, yeah. Not great. See, there's Danny trying to be nice, but she she no. But pero yo tengo las manos super sucias. So Danny wants to. We got these two. We got ah, these. Yo sí, pero no vas a apoyar. We got these two. It's probably out of focus. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. We got a couple of, of um, pieces that we bought today. Uh, a couple from Alexander Wilby. So maybe Wilby, you're, um, you, are, you are listening or maybe you are in the live, um, live video. We got this one and we got this drawing that's so nice. I loved it. Um, and we got the uh, the painting that we just showed you. That's Anna. Her name. I'm probably going to butcher her name. She's she's a wonderful. Um, I think Ukrainian young artist. Uh, she's Anna Alpatieva. Anna Alpatieva. And well, we're shocked. I mean, uh, when I saw that on in, that watercolor on Instagram, I was like, oh my god! I I have to ask her if maybe this is for sale. And I was surprised that it was, and I was surprised that her prizes were kind of aligned with what we, you know, with the prices that we, um, well, that we, uh, I don't want to say promote, but, you know, the sort of prices that the, our paintings go for, which means that are the prices of the paintings that we can purchase. Because many times we can like something very, very much, and that has happened to both Danny and myself. Like, Danny wanted to gift me 
and, and Andrew Cranston, um, like drawing, uh, a, you know, a couple of months back, and she realized that I can't afford it. No, that we can't <laughs> afford it. Like it, it's very, very. He's very. He's a genius. He's, but he's very expensive. Very, very expensive now. And we both really like him. Um, I presented. I, I showed. <laughs> I was just saying that because Danny gets mad because she was the one that introduced me to his work. Um, so I always make fun that I'm the one that um, showed Danny somebody who's amazing and she didn't know of. But um, but no 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 she she's a super fan of him and 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 she she's the one that showed me his work for the first time and incredible. But yeah but he's showing in New York um, now and and he just he's incredibly unaccessible uh, so yeah so I would love to have something of Matt Bollinger or Anthony Kudahe, Um but we can't <laughs> those people are, are very famous now and, and we can't uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't get stuff that is amazing from you know younger people uh, and and that's who we concentrate on um, well, younger, and I'm saying Alexander Wilby. So, <laughs> Wilby, uh, Wilby is is as old as I am. I feel we're contemporaries, but we try to we we really try to concentrate on on younger younger people. Not to say that you know older, more mature artists that are starting out are not worth an investment. No, of course not. I've I've always said just buy you know stuff that you love that you enjoy, but it's just that. Um, starting out is so tough, so, so tough, that um, sometimes it, you know, buying a, a painting from somebody that, that's young and starting out, it's, it's what they needed, you know, they, they were doubting themselves and, and they, you know, maybe they were at a point where they needed the money or, or they just needed that little bit of push to, to tell them, hey, you're in the right track, like, people are going to react um, to your work that we try we try to to find people like that and um, I mean we we try to buy as much as we can and we've certainly bought um, we probably have like over 120 pieces mm -hmm. that we bought during this whole project which is amazing I mean I think that that's that that's been the most one of the most exciting parts also about the project the fact that we've also given ourselves the chance to um, to, to experience the work of so many talented people around the world, um, that it's, it, it's incredible. That's, that's been a really beautiful part of, of, of this whole project. And um, it's nice, you know, every month we, we get paintings that we've paid for, for, you know, maybe we pay for them, you six know, six months, months ago, <laughs> and maybe they have gone stuck. A lot of paintings we haven't even gotten that is also the truth like they were lost in the mail during the pandemic um they were detained somewhere for taxes or for some weird stupid bureaucratic reason and we didn't get them um but it you know it makes us sad but it also it's also a nice reminder that we never you know the first reason that we that we wanted to buy some of the paintings was never just to own the paintings and to collect for the sake of collecting but to you know to help somebody who's starting out and um, to be part of that moment uh, and if we could do that that's great if we can have a painting by doing that from them that's awesome but if, if it got lost in the mail and we never you know got the painting I, we have never contact, contacted anyone and said hey you know, the painting never reached us, give us our money back. We, we've never said that, never ever. With, with not one of the paintings that we've, um, we've gotten, you know, throughout the months. So um, it really is a matter of, um, of knowing that we're doing this for, for different reasons. So today we were super happy. Um, we got, well, I, I was, you know, I remember the, the sale that we did, like the, the painting that we bought was the uh, drawing from Wilby, which is amazing. I think he's an incredible drafts person. Um, but he sent us like a painting, which I'm, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be me. Like I'm flattered if it's me, because uh, Wilby does uh, a ton of distortion too that I 
really, really enjoy. So maybe it is me, maybe it is like a square version of me, which I super enjoy, but I don't want to just believe that it can be me because that's, um, because that, that, it wouldn't be right if it wasn't so. This is a related question. Yep. And it's a difficult one. So Oof. it says, <laughs> do you have any favorite pieces in your original oh. art collection? Oof. Well, one is easy. It's the, the, the one that Danny gifted to me, that it's a Ben Bjorklund painting. And Ben is a friend, I would say. It's a painter that I, um, that I admire probably, you know, as much as I could admire any living artist, I feel that Ben Bjorklund has to be one of the most talented people that I've ever seen in my life. And the tricky thing about this is that I had been trying to buy something from Ben for years, years, and we even like exhibited together, we showed together. And I was always like, oh, I love this painting. And when I tried to buy it, it was already sold or, you know, Ben didn't have it or whatever. There was always like a, a reason for the painting that I wanted never being never being there. And um, for my birthday yep. last year, mm. last year, yeah, no. yeah, last year. El 2019. No, el 20. Sí. Sí, fue el 20. Sí, sí, sí. Es que ya estamos, ya pasó mucho. No, bueno, creo que sí, no sé, no me acuerdo. For my birthday, Danny was um, contacted Ben, and Ben um, answered back, which is something that is uh, hard to get Ben to do. And he, you know, Danny was able to set something up with him, and and Ben uh, eventually FedEx the uh, paint. Eventually, <laughs> FedEx the painting, and it's one of the most beautiful paintings that that we have. I mean, it, it. It is because it means a lot to the two of us, so... And, um, but he shipped, like, in a very good time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was on time for your birthday. It was on time for my birthday, so, yeah. yeah. Ben was... He, I think he got nervous that it wouldn't get here on time, and he FedExed it, which... And he was super kind. Yeah, which must have been, yeah. like, expensive for him, but... Yeah, he Ben is like a ray of light in this universe, and he is one of the most naturally talented people that anyone will ever, ever see, I think, in their lives. And just to have him as a reminder of, of how special he is, it's, it's just, I don't know. For me, I, I think if there was one piece that I would have to single out, it's, it's his, because it just means that much to, I think, to the both of us also. So it's not just, not just about having a painting or owning a painting, but it's just, yeah. it, it really does mean a lot to us. And so. for me, the um, Oliver Jeffers. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and the um, the sculpture. Yeah. Fernando. Rosas. See. Sí. Sí. Yeah. So Danny's favorite illustrator is Oliver Jeffers. Oliver Jeffers, and um, I was able to in our first Christmas I was able to buy like a original like little pen and ink drawing from him. And no, it's a pencil drawing. No, it's pen. It's pen. Sí. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pen. It's pen. Ah, mentira, sí, 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 yeah. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a pen and ink um, drawing from... ¿Cómo es que se llama ese libro? Es, es el original de un, de un libro. Espérame, ¿lo traigo? ¿Lo traigo? <laughs> oh, no. Si quieres, si quieres. Then he's going to go for the book. So, yeah, so I was able to, to get that um, Oliver Jeffers drawing for her. Um, it was nerve-wracking for me. And it was, I think at that time, at that moment, it was probably the most that I had uh, spent on buying artwork. And, um, but Danny, Danny was worth it. So it was, um, it was really nice. And she got, she was very, very happy when she saw it. She, she, and it's very simple. I mean, anything by Oliver Jeffers is, is like, yeah, anything by him. It's probably out of focus, but it's, yeah. So it's, it's really, it's, it's really nice. So. Yeah, so I, I guess that, you know, if you've noticed, the, the pieces that mean the most to us are the ones that we have given each other, so <laughs> that we have bought for, for each other just because we know that, that um, they're going to mean something to us. Um, I, if it's not that one, I would have to say my, my Batman from Jean-Paul Leon, just because, you know, he, he 
he passed away a couple of months after he he sent me the um, the drawing, and uh, oof, it was it was very very sad. He had been uh, battling cancer for a long time, and um, it's just it, to me it's just almost inconceivable that he did this, you know, commission for me uh, while he was sick. Um, it's just remarkable that he was able to do this while he was sick. So. It, it means a lot and um, and for somebody like myself who, who you know my the reason that I love what I you know what I do is because of comic books and because of you know in the first comic book that I had that I was kind of aware of was Batman and then to have somebody who in my mind is like the best artist at drawing Batman at least contemporary artist at drawing Batman to do something for me um, it was it was incredible. It was very very nice. So yeah. So that that's I I'm also gonna be honest. Um, that's the only piece that's hanging here where I paint. That's the only piece that I have up where I paint. So it it does mean something. It does mean that much to me. So I I I love that. Mm -hmm. Do you think you will do a conversation with Benjamin Bjorklund? Um, we've been trying. Danny, Danny knows that we've been um, we've been trying to set something up for um, for for you know last couple of months. You know, for a long time now. Um, you know, we'll wait for Ben, and we'll wait and see. You know, when and if you know he he feels he he's. Um, he has um, his time. He has time to to do this conversation, but uh, but don't don't worry. Like I I always try to uh, talk to him and, and see how things are, and uh, hopefully in the future we'll be able to do that because he is he he certainly is somebody who's different, who's very very different. So yeah, I can assure you that you know as much as you want that to happen, I I I'm dying to just talk to him for like a couple of hours also so yeah well we'll we'll keep trying who is the best cook you or danny oh that is so easy so so easy <laughs> no it's it's danny i i have no idea that i'm terrible really terrible my extent goes you know to pasta. um yeah i could do pasta i could do eggs, eggs. <laughs> Last night I did some uh, scrambled eggs with like um, uh, turkey, with like bits of turkey, um, and that's about it. <laughs> I'm I'm really terrible. I'm really terrible. Not not terrible. I think that if I tried, I I could do a good job, a, a better at least a better job than than what I do. But uh, as far as as being just naturally gifted to do that, the, or or having like the patient, I mean, Danny has like, Danny's always like patient enough, like she has timers, like if a recipe says you have to wait for X amount of time or check it, like she always believes in those times. And me, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, fly by, <laughs> I'm just gonna do it without instruments. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm an idiot. So it all, always something goes wrong, like, if I'm trying to cook something, there's always like smoke going on, <laughs> going off in the stove, like our apartment just covered in smoke. Uh, we have to open every window. Never know why that happens. Uh, maybe the pans are too hot. Maybe I just leave it there for too long. Uh, but yeah, for sure, for sure, Danny. Uh, I, I wish it was me, but no, not really. What's the philosophy behind flat and round brushes choice? Oh wow! For for me, it's kind of simple. Just edge work. I can control it far far better with this. And modeling, I could do really well with a round. So, I know I'm probably um, generalizing way too much, and and it's an oversimplification of what they do. But if I had to just express it very very simply, that would be that would be the case for me. Mm, are you guys night? Owls no. or morning people? Oh, Danny used to be. So Danny used to bartend 
Yeah. Um, so she totally was a night person. And I was never, I mean, I used to go out uh, when I was younger and for sure love to go out at night, but I, I would always, regardless, I, I, I've always told this to people, like, it didn't matter if I, you know, went to bed at like four in the morning, by six o'clock I was up. Like, if I had a good two hours of sleep, like, that was good enough for me. Like, that, I, I'm perfectly fine with that. And I, but I think Danny can say that I, I am kind of like that way. Like, I really don't need a lot of sleep to, to yeah. function. But Danny used to be, um, she used to go to school and bartend at the same time, which was very, very tough for her, to trying to deal with those two um, schedules at the same time. And um, it was weird for us because we couldn't really hang out that much um, in the weekends because she was working, she was getting in like super late and then Sundays she was just completely destroyed. But then she also had to do a lot of stuff for, um, for art school and um, so, yeah, so it was, um, I remember it was tough for us to understand our schedule at the beginning, but, um, but as soon as, you know, Danny at some point quit, um, and, and she, you know, she started having like this more, more traditional, uh, sort of schedule and, um, I can, I can totally say that we benefited, we as a couple benefited from yeah. that. Yeah. And no, and my health. Yeah, also. and you were like, yeah, yeah, because she she used to be super super exhausted all the time. So, um, so that I think that was a good balancing for her. And now I'm still I'm still because that's who I am. I'm still like a super morning person. Um, and I guess that that's, you know, that comes with the territory if you have kids. So for me, normal day starts at you know five thirty. Um, I'm always up at 5.30, I'm always um, waking up when, when Samuel and Fer are with us because they're with us every week, like they're, they're, they're always one week with us and then one week with their mother. Um, if they're with us, uh, we, I wake up 5.30, although if they're not, I do I mean, yeah, if, when like they're not, six? yeah, when they're not, I wake up at 5.30, but I'll get out of bed at 6, around 6, yeah, so... Yeah, so I'm, I'm always a morning, and Danny's just Danny wakes up just a little bit later, just like tiny. seven, seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and and we try to um, go to bed late, but no, not but really. not late. Yeah, like, but we're not. asleep always like ten. Yeah, it's terrible. Like <laughs> eight, nine, or ten. Yeah. <laughs> no, eight. <laughs> no. Sometimes, yeah. Eight, sometimes, no, but yeah. when we no, when we travel or when we do mm, things like sometimes. we're tired. <laughs> No, oh my <laughs> god, we're pathetic. We are very really pathetic. <laughs> um, a ver. Do you think of painting more as superimposed shapes or planes or form? Oof. Um, I don't know, that's a tough one. I've never thought of... I've, I've never thought of it that way, or superimposed or modeling a form. I, I'm guessing I'm, I'm interpreting what you're asking correctly. Um, both, maybe? I mean, a combination, like, a, there's always going to be an answer that, that conceives that both, both things can be done. So I'm going to go with that. I think that my, the, way I, the way I naturally paint, I think I do both. And I think that both of them can, can live in the same sort of realm. So, yeah, I'm going to go with both, which is a terrible, you know, I'm going to sit on the fence and I'm going to say both. Um, but as with anything, there's no right answer here. Like, whatever works for you is, is going to be what makes sense. Um, I just don't like becoming dogmatic about it. Like, if it works for you, great. That's awesome. Um, just use that and, and push it and... Hopefully it'll take you super far, but that doesn't mean that's the only way to do something. I'm not saying that you're saying that, but I, I'm always very careful to not sound overly dogmatic about um, about something that I I know that I naturally tend to. Um, how do you think of value creative, creatively? 
Creatively? Creatively, sorry. No, no sorry. Like the face here being very low contrast, contrasting with the dark of the clothing. Yeah, but I think that's easy because, you know, the, the two shapes are, are so separate from each other that we can understand that they can be conceived separately. Like, it's not, I'm not asking a lot of people or the observer when, when I, you know, make that choice. Um, your brain is already understanding that they are going to be two very different uh, shapes that natively uh, also have uh, different values. So I don't think with this one there's there's an enormous risk of doing something that's um, that's going to put the integrity of the painting, um, you know, on the line. But th there are I, I think I've done other paintings where the risk is a lot higher. I, I would say. But, um, but in this particular one, it's just a matter of saying, you know, there's this big mass, this big base, you know, we still have that um, very Western, um, Western manner of observing images where we understand this as a base and we understand this as something that's up. Uh, so it's almost like a, a, a pyramid or a mountain shape that, and, and the base we associate with something that has gravitas, that's something that has the power to give it, to anchor it to the bottom of the image. Um, so doing stuff like this is always going to work because that, you know, that's part of how we see images. That's that's part of how we read images. Um, and and like I said, you know, this little collar here, it's a perfect transition to break into something completely different. So um, I wanted to maintain that that sort of threshold that that collar is, and then acknowledge that there is a break. Um, and if it's that evident, then we as observers are going to be like, okay, that's, that, that was the way that was intended. You know, we're not going to question it, even though it feels, um, it feels exaggerated. Um, the other thing, when things are a little more subtle, they're, they're, a, diff they're a bit more difficult to pull off. But I think in this particular case, it, it, it doesn't feel so difficult. And also, the fact that, you know, what I said at the beginning, that because, because it's Helen uh, Scherfbeck, it just kind of makes, you, you know, you, you can kind of justify it by saying, oh, that's what makes sense within her own painting. Like, that is something that she herself did in her own work. So just by doing it here, we're just kind of pointing, it's just another way of pointing at her. So, so that's, you know, that, that also justifies it, I guess. Um, do you prefer that, should we do sketch of portraits first or straight away start painting? I think both, I think both are super healthy ways of, of doing, you know, things. If you guys are fans of the channel, you, you for sure notice that many times I'll do like a, um, elaborate, I mean, I, I don't want to say like a, a really well-developed uh, drawing underneath, but maybe far more elaborate than, than you know, you would think, a drawing that like an underdrawing, but there are other, other moments like today where you just, or yesterday's painting, where I feel completely at home and completely comfortable just going straight to paint. So. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what prompts me to do either or. Maybe I, you know what it is? Maybe, maybe I do it when, when I see myself just going for painting too, for too long, like going straight for painting for too many paintings. I tell myself, okay, change it up a little bit. Just kind of try something different out just so that you don't get used to a, a single manner of working. And, and if I, you know, if I'm sketching, if I'm doing my, my, my sketches for an underdrawing for too long, I tell myself, okay, you're becoming a little too reliant on your underdrawing. Why don't you try to go for um, straight to paint, like right from the beginning? Um, and I think that that's what I do. You know, honestly, it's just a, 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 you know, an effort to always catch myself out of breath, to catch myself kind of out of balance so that I can push myself so that I, I don't feel comfortable as a painter. That to me is super, super important. Um, there's someone asking if I can show a painting like this. 
Sí, so, yeah, of course. So this is um, I, I, I don't like to um, I don't like the fact that it's um, it it won't be in focus. ¿O quieres trepárte y enfocarla? No, no, no. Sí, hazle. No. Y cambias no, el foco. Me toca. So I hope this is in focus. Sí, pero ya. So that's that's like a gouache painting of Danny's. Está cortada. Ah no. Yeah. yeah, Danny's asking me, don't, yeah, no, don't put no it. She's like a super good painter. Like this hand, it kicks ass. Like that's amazing. And this torso is amazing. The way the, the, the sheet just flattens her head. That yellow is, I think, brilliant. So yeah, so this is something that Danny does. And she, this is gouache, which I, <laughs> she's trying to get the painting from me, which I totally suck. Like look at the construction at, the, um, at that chair. It's amazing. Super, super cool. Like she's, Honestly, when I say like she does stuff that I can't do, I'm not exaggerating. Like she honestly can do a lot of stuff that I'm like I have no clue how to do that. So that's why I find her like super cool as a partner. Um, it's um it's really nice to to know that that you know hopefully hopefully in uh, in our in our project next year, like that's what I was saying um, yesterday. We're going to be pushing each other in, in tons of really cool ways. Like, that's the expectation. I mean, I'm sure that we, we're going to start a little bit kind of rough around the edges and, you know, it's going to be tough to, to get things going. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to try to get a feel for the project at the beginning. But I know that we're going to be able to do it. I totally know we're going to be able to do it. And we were speaking about it yesterday. And uh, we think it's kind of cool if if the uh, paintings can be sold as a pair. So, you know, instead of just having individual paintings, like uh, the, um, I guess these would be every two weeks, we would just have the two, the pair of paintings just be available because that's that's how we're conceiving it. So it, it'd be, you know, kind of sad to break them up. So, you know, we, 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 we can still, I think we can still sell them at a very affordable price and and keep the nature of them being a pair alive. So that's going to be super cool. Ah, pues es obvio, obvio te van a decir cosas bonitas cuando lo que haces es tan chévere. A ver, otra pregunta. Um, how do you learn about other artists, modern or historical? Do you seek, seek them out or just come across them naturally? I think both. I think both. In in my case, um, remember I was a you know a painting teacher for twelve years at a university, so you know it's also part of my job to just keep myself um, educated and informed about painters that are you know doing amazing things nowadays. Um, so I would always seek stuff out. I was always 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 read stuff that I was not familiar with um, and I just have this natural kind of tendency like Danny can tell you um, I just love to collect you know kind of information about painters that I like in my brain and so so I'm also I guess naturally so I'm not saying that this is like a talent I'm just saying that I'm, I'm just naturally inclined to to remember and enjoy. No, but it is a talent. No, no. Yeah. No, but I'm just naturally inclined to to enjoy the work of of um, people that I you know find interesting, and and it always kind of prompts me to want to learn more about them. So I'm I'm always very curious, very very curious. Um, so so yeah, so it's that. I I think that it's healthy to do both. I think it's healthy to. You know, to keep an eye open in, in whatever social media you hang out. If you if you also have, you know, if you also follow pages of of people that are you know super interesting, different to you, different you know, different being super important here also. I feel that that's that's very relevant to trying to stay um, objective about your own work. Um, the fact that you you try to follow people's work that have nothing to do with your own work and you still enjoy. I mean, it's not following for the sake of following. It's just following because you realize, wow, this is not something I expected to like, but suddenly I'm super drawn towards their work. Um, I think that that's, that's really, really important. And, um, 
And, uh, and the other part is, you know, when you realize, for example, today, if you read, oh, Helen Scherfbeck was a Finnish painter from, you know, turn of the century, like the um, late 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. And you go like, wow, I realize I have no clue about uh, Scandinavian painting uh, of the uh, turn of the century. So let me look that up. Let me see if I, you know, if I recognize painters that maybe I've heard at some point. And maybe, you know, you're looking at Scandinavian painters and you, you, you know, you bump into Croyer or Anna Anker and you say, oh, okay, I've seen that painting. I, 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 I've always seen it, but I've never tied it to a name. And now you can, now you tie it to somebody and you can say, okay, I, you know, this is making sense. Or, or, you real, or you start reading a little bit about, you know, what was the, um, you know, how these Scandinavian women painters um, educated themselves. Like, what was the norm um, around that time? Like, what, was, what, what were they supposed to do? Were they educated uh, locally or did they have to travel and go to France to educate themselves? Uh, if they traveled and, and went to France, were they, were they going to these schools that were just for women at the time? Um, who was their teacher? You start kind of getting into this rabbit hole of, of just wanting to know a little bit more about them contextually, and it's super interesting. It's always super, super interesting, so. The way you think about painting seems to align with Buddhist practices. Do you have any interest in Buddhism? I've tried, I, I, I've talked about this before, but I tried to meditate, and I, I tried, um, but it was very hard for me until I realized that um, in many ways what I was doing when I was painting was meditating. You know, I was very, very close to meditating while I was trying to paint, you know, while I was attempting to do my paintings every day. It was very close to that feeling that I thought I had to search for when I was um, hoping that I could learn about, you know, meditating. So I don't meditate. I've read about, you know, I've, I've read quite a bit about Buddhism. I don't think I have that spiritual side of me, though, also. Um, I, I, because I do feel that this is the chance, this is the only chance we have. Like, we're on Earth for this one, you know, moment in time, and we just have to make the best of it, and we just have to try to be decent human beings. So in that sense, I, I feel that this is it. Like, this is all we have. There's nothing afterwards. Um, and we just have to try to, you know, just make, make it fun for ourselves, but don't, you know, don't go through people in trying to do that. You know, uh, have the company of people when, you, when you're trying to do that. For, for me, it's been incredible with Danny because she, she has become, you know, I hope that we are this for each other, but like our company for life, yeah, you know, yeah. going through this, you know, super cool moment in life. So I love that, um, that we can be somebody else's company, that somebody can be the company for us and, and we can just share this experience together. But for me, it's, you know, this is it, this is it. And, and because I understand that this is it, then I, I cherish the time that I have with my kids because I know that life is just, you know, lending them to me for like a little bit for like a tiny little moment and I hope that I can share with them my whole life but if that doesn't happen I have to teach myself how to how to be accepting of that fact um, but yeah so that's where I'm I'm aligned but in other aspects and in, in more spiritual aspects um, maybe not I just don't believe in deities or I don't believe in powers I believe in the randomness of, of nature which I find fascinating. You know, like Einstein thought that it couldn't just be a, a random thing. Like, it, like there's, there's no way this universe is the way it is because it's a throw of the dice. I think it is. I think it is, and I think it's wonderful. So I think we are that much of a miracle, you know, us human beings. A very flawed miracle, but I think we are. Um, we're just, you know, pretty remarkable in the sense that we can question things. Um, so yeah, so that's that's where maybe I'm I'm misaligned. If you compare the water soluble oil paint with the regular oil paint, would you say it's the same or more like day and night? 
So you can ask Danny because she's been doing a painting and she's been hating them <laughs> for. She's been doing like this painting, um, and she she doesn't really like them, and. I think that what Danny, what you've described is that they don't really stick to yeah. the, you, yeah. you feel like they don't stick to the surface, that because you can't I thought, work yeah. on them. Yeah, 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 and I thought they were going to be like a gouache, mm -hmm. but they're not, but yeah. they're not oils. Right, right. So, yeah, they're yeah. in this really weird middle place. Yeah, but also I wasn't using any medium, just water, right. so maybe the medium for the water-soluble oils would help. Maybe, I yeah. Think. I've never used it either, so I don't know how those mediums are. I'm guessing that they're very viscous, maybe? Like, like, um, like uh, glycerin, is it? Um, but yeah, for me, it was strange. They're kind of gummy. The best yeah. way I can describe them is gummy. Kind of chewy colors under the brush. So modeling with them, it's a little strange. The drying times is a little strange also. Like they don't attach. Yeah, to the surface. Right, right, and, and they do take a while, a little bit longer for them to dry. But again, I, I, I'm guessing that a lot of people are like, that's totally fine with me because what I don't want is to use solvent or what I want is just to use, you know, regular water to wash my brushes. I'm totally fine with that. Um, again, paint, paint um, oil is not what makes paint um, hazardous for, for our health. It's usually the pigment that is the one that's hazardous, or usually the solvent that's hazardous. So, so, um, so if you have to wash your brushes with just water and, and skip the, the part where you have to, you know, kind of rinse your brush on, on solvent or oil, yeah, I mean, that helps, but still, the, the thing that's bad for the environment, I would say, even, is, is the heavy metals in your paint just going down the drain. That's always going to be bad so so if you if you're more inclined to use water soluble paint is, is because you don't want to deal with solvent and um, and that's about it but you're willing to sacrifice some of the handling and some of the drying times for that um, for for being able to to work with that emulsion emulsion of paint so they're telling us that um we are supposed to use mediums for the water mixable oils and only water to clean them up. So okay, so we maybe. use water. <laughs> yeah, we used. We were probably doing it wrong. Yeah, we used in the week that I, I did. I do one. Yep. Two weeks or just no, one? No, I think just one. Just one, right? Yeah, one and two of wash. If I'm okay, wrong. yeah. So in the week that I I was using them, I did use water and it was terrible. Yeah. It was absolutely terrible. The the wash of water isn't even isn't even that attractive. I mean, what is left of water, um, what is the, like the puddle that is left in the surface isn't even that nice. It it doesn't even serves as a nice vehicle for the for the paint. I feel. Um, so yeah. So water is a terrible terrible medium for that paint. I would say also. Um, but we can't get the, um, the mediums for it here in Bogota. Yeah. So we were able to get the paint. We were super, um, super surprised that we were a that just at our, at our regular art store, they had those paints. And that's the reason why we tried them that one time. Um, but yeah, well, we weren't able to get any of the mediums. They, they didn't, you know, they didn't, um, import any of the mediums. So, so yeah, maybe we got half of the experience. Yeah. Maybe we need to get the medium and give it a second try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we're also, well, in my case, I'm also working in just a raw piece of paper. And, um, and I don't know, you know, I don't know if, if it's good for that either. I don't know if it's better, in, in, you know, if we're better served with a nicely um, primed surface, so. Um, si uno está haciendo un retrato, ¿cómo hacer que la pintura no se trate únicamente del parecido? Uf, difícil, ¿no? Súper difícil esa pregunta. Pues en esta, digamos que en esta el pretexto también ha sido eh, apoyarnos un poco en la artista que estamos eh, pintando para que eh, el, el argumento, digamos, formal vaya más allá de, de la, la mera como representación pero es súper complejo entonces digamos que ella, ella nos está 
ayudando, ella es como la excusa para, para poder referenciar eh, aspectos de la pintura de ella que son fantásticos. Y si nos apoyamos en esos aspectos, digamos que si, si le damos una prioridad en la construcción de la pintura de esos aspectos, pues en últimas la pintura se empieza a convertir en otra cosa. Esto, esto, esto por ejemplo, termina siendo súper abstracto en nuestra imagen. Y el hecho de que querramos eh, hacer una transición hacia una, un modelado en la cabeza que esté en un rango tan comprimido de valores, pues también habla de unas como calidades expresivas que estaban súper presentes en, en la obra de ella. Pero es como un ping-pong ahí entre nuestra pintura y, y cosas que podemos aprender de ella. Pero ahí tenemos a ella, digamos que ahí la tenemos a ella de, de punto de partida, entonces hace que nuestra vida sea muchísimo más fácil. Cuando no tenemos eso es súper es difícil, o sea, ese, ese aspecto es súper es complejo. Y, y yo trato o sea, de, de reconocer al menos así sea un aspecto formal en la pintura o algo que que haga que yo no me tenga que fijar tanto en si las medidas me están quedando bien o si el parecido está, como que tratar de entender que si esta pintura fuera de alguien que uno no conoce, también funciona, o sea, que, no, que, la, única, que la única dimensión en la que funcione no puede senc sencillamente ser si es parecida o no, sino que si uno de pronto conoce el contexto en el que ella trabajaba o, o digamos el modernismo hacia el que ella se inclinó, eh, al, al final eh, uno puede disfrutar esa pintura como en esos, en esos otros niveles pero difícil, o sea para responder a, a su pregunta compleja, eh, la respuesta es también como compleja, la respuesta es decir la verdad es que es difícil o sea, la verdad es que es bien complicado eh, Preciosa la pintura, me encanta su trabajo, tengo Muchas una gracias, pregunta ¿Sí? en el logo de OPL ¿quién se supone que es el triángulo y quién la bolita? Pues la bola redonda, con o sea, gafas. perdón, sí, la bola, bola redonda con gafas, bueno, es que yo no uso mucho, la, yo no uso las, las gafas, gafas en, sí. Ah, en los intros, sí, es verdad. En los intros, sí, pero yo uso gafas, lo que pasa es que las uso para ver tele o para manejar o, sí, no las uso todo el tiempo, por ejemplo, para pintar no las uso, eh, pero, pero entonces yo, yo soy la bola rojita con gafas, porque yo siempre he dicho que yo soy como como un ginger, como de, no sé, un ginger de, de contrabando, o sea, yo soy como, como un, un, porque mi abuelo era alemán, entonces yo tengo como esa parte europea, pero que se volvió como, como un perro, callaje, perro callejero cuando se, con, eh, cuando se mezcló con Colombia, entonces yo soy como blanquito rosado, eh, si me da el sol 15 minutos me pongo rojo entonces yo soy esa bolita roja y Dani tiene entusiasmo en exceso Dani es esa persona que uno le dice oye me acompañas a y uno no ha terminado la frase y ella ya está en la puerta esperando a que uno salga eh, pero no soy entonces está saltando y tiene el pelo negro Dani tiene el pelo así eh, negro, negro entonces no. pues ahorita no lo tiene negro pues ahorita se lo pintó pero, pero Dani tiene el pelo súper bonito negro y, y entonces ella va brincando y, y yo voy como caminando así sí, no sé, es bobo, <ríe> es súper tonto pero, pero pues no sé no. Pero, pero para nosotros tenía sentido sí, sí, nos divertimos, sentido, nos divertimos sí. haciéndolo y, sí, sí, sí. Y, y la bolita camina como con el ritmo tu, 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 sí. y, el y el triangulito va brincando vale. entonces, sí. sí, chévere pero sí, somos, somos los dos obviamente yo soy la, la pelotita um... so I think I'm done. I think I'm done because I think that if I keep doing stuff in the bottom of the painting, I'm going to ruin the, the sort of bigness, the uh, really nice uh, contrast that I have right now. I like the edges. I, I couldn't just cut this shape out. So I think this is very nice. And um, I really wanted that head. Initially, I don't know if you guys noticed, I didn't have much contrast between this and the background. Just there was a huge change. So. What that means is that this was like a bluish gray when compared to the uh, yellow, the earth yellow of the uh, face. And initially I was just going to use my raw, uh, my raw sienna, but I started introducing some moments of warmness throughout the uh, head, some like in the cheek, cheekbones. Um, and I think that kind of worked. And there's still 
congruency between the values here and the background. So yes, it, it, it kind of dissolves itself into the background, but there's still enough moments where it separates itself from the background for you to realize that it is a shape in and of itself. And I, and I kind of like that. I went for the overly expressive eyes. Um, I, I tried to model that nose, but not make it so, so important. So there was a lot of um, just leaving decisions be. And I think that that's the lesson in her painting also. I mean, if you look at the, um, at the simplification in her work, it's just tremendous, tremendous. And it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing what she was able to do with so very little choices. Um, I think that's, that, that's the lesson that I would always take from her work. Um, just trying to be economical about uh, my decision. And, and if you are going to make a decision, make it count. You know, if you're going to put something down, make it count. Um, I am far more, uh, 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 I doubt myself as a painter far more than her. She was far more committed. Uh, so whenever I put stuff down, I, I always have to kind of, you know, fidget with it, like move it around and, and shift it. And, and, and eventually I found a moment, I find a moment where it satisfies me. But, but for somebody like me who was, you know, full of, of doubt, of self-doubt when I paint, it's great to, to paint somebody who is a constant reminder of, of the value of being committed, of the value of the weight of decision making. So I think that that's the lesson behind the painting. And it was really nice today. So and I'm very happy. I think it works well. I was super concerned. I was really scared that that I started to elongate the head and I tried to make her a little more distorted and which meant that I was cu gonna cut off her head up top. But um, at some point I was like, just soften these up there. You know, and the bun had to be dark. There had to be some contrast here in the bun. But I was like, just soften it and let it go at t uh, you know, up top and you know, hopefully it'll work out. And I think it did. I think it, it really did. So I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm, 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 super, I'm super glad that um, I went back to the idea that I wanted to, um, to do yesterday, which was to start with a, an incredible women painter. And like I said, I wanted to paint Mela Muter because I adore Mela Muter. And I have painted Olga Oznanska. I did a, a gouache painting of her. I could paint her again. She's amazing. So maybe I could paint her again. But uh, I wanted to paint Mela Muter, but you, it's so hard to find um, like cool photographs to paint of her. I, I found this video of her, you know, this tiny little moments of her when she was older, painting this painting, smiling. Oh my God, it's the most adorable, the most amazing thing on earth. If you go to YouTube and if you type her name, Mela Muter, um, M-E-L-A, and her last name is Muter, uh, M-U-T-E-R, that's like the second video you're going to find, and, and she's incredible. It's a black and white, you know, video, but... Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm very happy that I, I went with Helen Shearfeck today. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's super cool. That's gonna, be, that's gonna be it for today. Any closing, closing questions or comments? Or... Um, are either of your kids interested in art, drawing, or painting? I think Samu, I think um, I'm always reminded of their drawings. So I have them here, my arms, my hands. So they were at some point, I, I always thought, and Samu just got home from school, but I always thought Samu was gonna be the one because he really liked drawing animals and dinosaurs when he was a kid. Um, but then he didn't, then he stopped. Uh, and then he started drawing memes and, and that was cool for him. And I never, I've never told him, oh no, you have to draw something different. No, 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 if that's what makes them happy, that's awesome. And Fer, Fer actually likes to yeah. draw and paint and she likes design work she she has an ipad and and she, yeah, she bought procreate. yeah she asked me to buy procreate for her so and she's 10 and, and we bought it for her you know a year ago so yeah. when she was nine so she actually likes to watch videos and, and like and, tutorials and right like right to... like tutorials on how to paint and procreate and that's incredible like i learned photoshop when i was i don't know 20 20 you know 24 so um, so it's incredible that she, you know, I, I didn't ask her to do it. It was just her, you know, maybe because she saw also Danny working, uh, in, in Procreate, but, uh, she wanted that. And for her birthday, she was like, can I have like an, uh, uh, a pencil and iPad pencil? 
uh, so we bought her like a Gen 1 pencil, like a cheaper Gen 1 pencil, and, and she, she loves that stuff, so, yeah, but, you know, regardless of what my kids want to do with their lives, like, I, I support them and I love them. If they, if they want to, you know, walk dogs, that, then I, you know, if they're happy walking dogs for a living, I'm going to be proud of them and I'm going to feel they're amazing, so it doesn't matter. You know, whatever they want to do, I'll, I'll be, you know, I'll be behind them. So, I think, yeah, I think Fed is here. <laughs> That's her, her, her uh, phone ringing that maybe Fed is downstairs. But, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm super happy with how it, it came out. Um, yeah, I was very, it, it's very Tim Wilson at some point. I was like, oh my God, am I doing just like a Timothy Wilson painting? Uh, I got a little scared, a little insecure that I that it just had him in my brain for a little too much, but um, but I think the painting eventually settled into into what we have here, and I'm I'm pretty happy with with what we have. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I think is that gonna be it? Yeah. See, uh, last 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 comment or question just before we go. Uh, no, um, Leah. Leah. Or oh, Leah, maybe. L E E A H D. Okay. Goldberg was super kind, and he said. She, I think it's she. She or he, I'm sorry. Um, then if you or Nicholas want the water mixable oil mediums, DM me or respond to my email. So I was. Oh, that. thank you, thank Leah. You that, that's super kind. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. So. No, it, and and to be super super honest, like we could Amazon anything. It's just that. When we Amazon something here, or when we buy it from uh, Dick Blix or, or where, whatever store we buy it from, um, we all we always it's have to pay tax. Yeah. Oh, he. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was That's, right. Yeah, yeah. Danny's always right, so <laughs> I apologize. Um, uh, when we order stuff, it, it's always expensive because we have to pay taxes on top of everything. So it always costs like twice the price many times. So. We're always a little bit hesitant before we buy something, before we feel like we have to buy something from, from the internet. So if we can get it here, and it's even if it's like a lesser version of what we need, um, not professional oil paint or, or you know, a cheaper brush, we, we are going to uh, probably um, buy it here and just make the best of, of what we have here. So. And they're asking, could I buy the painting? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, all paintings, every single painting we, we make is going to be uh, uploaded to our website and, you know, give us like 15, 20 minutes. Um, I'll clean up and I'll take a photo and I'll upload it. And they're always 250 bucks, so they're always um, uh, kind of accessible. I, I know that that doesn't mean that they're cheap, but they, I think they're, um, you know, they're, they are honestly priced, I would say. And um, that's also around the price range that we buy, we buy uh, work from. So, I mean, we have gone over that price sometimes. Uh, sometimes Danny and I are like, oh my God, we just made, um, you know, 500 bucks in, in th these two days and we spent uh, 750 bucks in a couple of things that we bought. So we feel kind of stupid that way. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but ours is always in the project like 250 bucks. Uh, I think that's a, we, we think that's a, a super fair price. So it'll be up in the, um, yeah, in our plus site. Shipping. Yeah, and you, and you guys pay for shipping. But yeah. the cool thing about shipping is that we ship every Wednesdays. We always go to FedEx. We always bring a bunch of packages to FedEx. Uh, the ones that are in the US, they sometimes get to the owners in two days, which is super, super quick. But we have a 100% uh, rate of getting people their success. paintings. Yeah, success rate. <laughs> And um, they're always in perfect shape. We, we try to do a good job at packing them. So uh, rest, you can, you know, rest, uh, um, uh, rest be sure that, that it's going to get to you in, in a um, good shape. So, yeah, so it'll be up there in a couple of minutes. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys for hanging out. Tomorrow we're going to be here same time, uh, which is 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, 1.30 p.m. for us here in Bogota. And hopefully you guys can uh, hang out with us for a little bit. And tomorrow, I'm gonna open this palette up just a lot more. So this was nice for today. I think the painting feels a little bit different. I mean, it does feel totally 19th century, you know, end of the 19th century, like the uh, Manet painting did yesterday. Tomorrow, we're gonna open it up. So we're gonna have um, 
um, other uh, hues to play around with and, and other alternatives in saturation. So I think that's going to be cool. So that's going to be it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See Bye. you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Nossa, que isso.